<laughs> Here we go, bronze medal match for W3AL Season 2. We have the grand final already with UMAT being victorious over Dust. So the American dream did not come true. But we have a rematch here of the Season 1 grand final. Sweden, the Soviet War Elites versus Oceanus. And the lineups are pretty cool. Uh, we start with Knopf versus Shockey. Then we have Lil DC versus Spiral. Thorzane versus Neutron. And Star Shaped versus Side. And the 2 and 2 of uh, Star Shaped and Thorzane versus Neutron and Shockey. We start with game number one. And it is Shockey versus Knopf. Here, the Bald Orc versus. The German Undead. And you said Knopf is going into this as the favorite. Knopf had a good run in the Rising Star Cup yesterday. The most successful Swede in that tournament, despite Thorzane taking part. So I wonder if he can carry his shape into this W3IL clan war. You gave the edge to him, and on paper, I think we all should. But I underestimated Shockey before. He is usually the 2-on-2 player for Oceanus, with uh, Wan not being here anymore. He steps in uh, into the solo lineup as well. And the last times I've seen Shockey play, he was nothing but great. Had, an, had a super important victory over Umat in the group stage. So, let's see what Shockey can do. We're in Northern Isles. He starts in the bottom left, and for Sweden, Knopf in the upper right. Yeah, Shocker, absolutely a strong player, has been up there in the European Battle.net rankings for a long time. You know, in the 80%, 85% win rate mark, something like that. So a really strong ladder player and something I like to point out over and over. One of the nicest guys ever. Like, as you guys may know, I'm, I play on many Smurfs. And he's like the guy asking, hey man, how are you doing today? Having a good time with Warcraft as well? I'm like, man, this is, this is so friendly, this is so nice. And that is Shocker. I've never met the guy in person, but I'm sure... He's a little sweetheart. Maybe like the German side, kind of. Maybe that's why they're in the same team. Also something special again about Shocker, uh, beside his extreme friendliness, is Fiend build every time. Every time. Every, every, every time. I think he's the one undead in the world, like a high level undead, that is still playing Fiend build. Against Orc, against Undead in the mirror all the time. This has been rotated out of the meta quite a while ago now. But he doesn't care, Neil. He doesn't care. He likes that build. He still plays it. He plays it here. And we'll see how that goes for him. Yeah, that of course results always in a later tech, but more firepower early on. In theory, better creeping. But it's not about timings. And if you play that all the time, you see... You're should be pretty predictable and with more fiends the orc has more targets especially at the early stages of tier 2 with the shadow hunter hex knopf finds him immediately has the claws and the circlet level 2 as well so windwalk after crit he started with creeping and he's almost trapping shocky here at the murlocs and snare flying uh oh this is not a good start for the german Fiend should be able to get saved. Oh, nice block from the Grunt. DK runs away from the Fiend. That is a mistake. Long range call comes in once again. That should save the Fiend now finally, unless the speed scroll is going to get popped. And that may very well be the case. Really good block here by Knopf. And this build by Shocker is designed to be strong early. Not to lose Fiends early. Fiend was denied at least to the creeps, but Fiend is still dead. More Ensnares could be coming. Look at Knopf. He's uh, blocking the Fiend so the Trapper can throw the Ensnare. This is some insane place by Knopf so far. And this build for Shocky, Shocker, really isn't working out. He's still blocking the Fiend. He's still got the speed scroll. This Fiend is 100% dead. Oh my god. That's a disaster. He just does it again. He blocks the Fiend again. Blade He's got many more windwalks. Yep. Has He's got more two wind more windwalks. He could absolutely kill this if he wants to expend all his mana. Dude, that is this, pretty sick. These two days of boot camping, Knopf's on steroids. Well, I mean, he always is. He but, always uh, is, but I mean, mental steroids as well. Yeah, that was pretty sick. Like, he may have been getting his ass handed to him today, apparently, on netties, but... You know, you learn from your losses, and apparently he learned really well. That was pretty damn insane. Again, this build is supposed to be strong early by Shocky. He went for 23 supply tech 
which is like ridiculous in late with backpack by the way that's why the tech here is so extremely delayed look at this tier 2 still not finished by shocker and knof on his way to tier 3 he crept the middle and whatever you find here everything is at least decent even the flute is decent because you want to go into berserkers late game uh, one grunt was not properly controlled during the creeping you don't really want to drop that low on hp but we're going to forgive that in Knopf's favor because this early game was still outstanding by him. One for the highlight reels. I mean, usually if we see Knopf in highlight reels, it's always uh, the other way. Knopf don't, Knopf don't, Knopf don't. We all know that wonderful Team Sweden video by Rekrim. Thank you, Opsalasins, for the six month resub. And. Plathonius for the 5 euro donation. BTWGG. Not yet, man. Not yet. But thank you very much. We had yep. uh, some more firepower by Shocky. Maybe he can finally get up to level 3, trying to steal some spots off of Knopf's side. But he just doesn't care. He has the Shadow Hunter out. He's willing to fight. Moves into the middle. Book of the Dead could be good as the spell is arriving so late. And that's an early level 3 for the Blade Master. And you know what that means? Windwalk level 2, a rogue BM roaming around. Now this is looking to be some old school Blade Master play. Find the Book of the Dead, pop it in the back, kill some acolytes during tech. But guess what? Shocky likes to tech late. In fact, he teched with two ghouls only and added the third ghoul only a minute ago, a second ago. So once again, his tech is so damn late. That's like two minutes behind Knopf's tech. Kn Knopf, by the way, going for a very early totem. Normally we see it around 40, maybe 45 supply, sometimes even Players only 50. But Knopf going for walkers super quickly early on because that is the late game army you want to move into away from melee. Why is that, Neo? Because melee sucks nowadays. <laughs> you want to go into berserkers and walkers instead. This base has a lot of holes, by the way, and Knopf abuses that right away, pops the Book of the Dead, but quick reactions by Shocker pulls the Acolytes away instantly. But this still costs gold, this is still a lot of lost mining time, and the Blade Master without Nova really has nothing to fear over here. And you can start to see the downsides of this somewhat antiquated build by Shocker. It just takes forever to come online when Undead is so very reliant on the tier 3 tech. And still one Acolyte died during the tech only to the Skeleton Warriors because the DK did not decide to coil right there. It's starting to look like the nerves are kind of showing here on the German side. To that, Shocky might not get uh, the best income, but we do because we have another donation by Haho Make for the five euros. Go Swee! And our friend of yesterday, Donald is back with another <laughs> 3 euro donation. Gonna love W3IL dominated by the Americans. Well, the Russians uh, punished you pretty hard in that grand final, but apart from that, uh, Dust of course played a glorious season. Blade Master revealed, trying to get the steal here, but it's too hurt. And that is finally a clause for the Lich. Also Gloves of Haste, his damage will be really good. Early investment into a potion, by the way, didn't catch that yet. So how much was this Book of the Dead worth? Pretty much 450 gold plus the Acolyte. The that tech is still somewhat far from done, so this is really painful. Yeah. I think I need to take Shocker under my wing and uh, teach him about base layout, because uh, only Terra and I know how to do that best. I think that was uh, one of the mo things I was most impressed with with Terra the other day. It was really nice. I'm just joking, of course. Um, Shocker is certainly a very nice player. This game, unfortunately, hasn't been going so well just yet. That's sometimes the way it goes, but maybe he can fight back. But now, Knopf was thinking about a creep jack down here. Comes in, looking for a fiend kill. Doesn't quite get that, but forces the TP away. And that is already kind of a big deal. That TP being gone now most likely won't be bought back for quite a while. So that's going to make these heroes' lives... Difficult. Shadow Hunter is already level 3 with double pendant of energy, by the way. Yes. Now creeping the red camp. TC's in the mix. Four grunts, by the way, by Knopf. That's pretty heavy. Normally, at least in Asia, we don't see that many. Rather, uh, Kodos especially and Berserkers coming in. As far as the tech goes for Knopf, we have the Kodo on the way. But not a single headhunter. And I don't think he has the Berserker training either. Not yet, no. Starts Destroyer upgrade is shocky. Red spot goes to Knopf, but it's only the Django. 
TC already knows how to play that, so he can sell it immediately. Level 4 for the DK. Level 2.5 only for the Lich. That will change in a bit, of course. Did he find Which it? Is claw. Yeah, starting to look really, really good. Yes. DK, by the way, goes for Aura 2, which I always find to be very dangerous against this tier 3 Orc style. But with a health pot, maybe that's something you can afford. TC is now level 2. Knopf is quickly creeping up the map, almost with 4, 3, 2 hero levels. If Knopf should manage to get TC level 3 before the first fight ensues, that's normally always a good uh, starting position for the Orc into the late game. And Knopf, feeling so confident indeed, that he's going for the 50 supply tiny great hall. I mean, certainly so far he has had a bit of an edge in this early game, or in this mid game, I should say. But that 600 gold not going into army, that can be a risk. But at the moment, Chakra is not really in position to do anything about this, especially because he doesn't have a third hero yet. True. I wonder what it's going to be with this early walker play. Kind of hard to tell what's best. We have early Banshees as well, of course not as early as the Walkers who were added on the way to tier 2 or, or running away from a lightning orb. It's not that easy, <clears throat> but the statue survives for now and the Ghoul is coming to the fight. No Banshee yet. Heavy on statues, building three. And Shocker, of course, lost two Fiends earlier. He also invested into a Mana Potion and a new TP. This is why it's taking him forever to get to 50 supply, because he was losing so many things and investing so much gold into items, whereas normally you try to uh, reduce those investments slash losses as much as you can, and that is why he's being slowed down so much. That is why Shocker is still not quite fight ready. I mean, he has level 4 DK, level 3 Lich, that's really good, but only one Banshee, and most importantly, no third hero, which normally means you can't really take a fight. Yeah, I agree. Knopf is occupying the tavern now, getting some beers. Super short on lumber, but he doesn't need that too much anymore. Oh, the destroyer. So uh -oh. That is unfortunate. Raider applies some little bondage and the Blade Master punishes him even further. Lightning, uh, shock treatment as well. Boom. Down he That's goes. The third unit dying in this game. Without a real fight yet. Yeah. Poor shocker. And there's also not much damage against this expansion. No abomination, one ghoul only, lots of piercing damage, that's not too great. Knopf seems to be in great shape again. 60%, uh, 60 supply against only 50. Next destroyer is up, but that means only one statue on the ground. Knopf would love to take a fight right now. Perhaps huh? not in that position, that is a little bottleneck. Not exactly ideal for this still mainly melee army. But Knopf is quickly making the transition here towards Headhunters more and more are queued. Speed scroll popped, and in we go! We're looking for the Ensnare, where's it gonna go? Raider aiming towards the Fiend. Three destroyers in the air, no sustain on the ground at all anymore. TC looking for the connection, still no third hero here by Shocker. TC hits a decent stomp, but it's only level one, not that strong. Kodo goes forward, does not get off the Devour, but one Fiend still does die. There's level four for the Blade Master and level four for the Shadow. TC is in trouble, has to perhaps transfer an item or something, doesn't quite manage to do it. TC falls, but so do more units for Shocker, down to only 36 supply. Knopf could rebuy the TC if he wants here at the tavern, but perhaps he doesn't quite have the Lumber, but what he does have is plenty of damage output still. Bitlord coming in now, trying to minimize the damage output, or at least reduce it a little bit, if not minimize. And looking for his own kills now is Shocker, but the mana is starting to drain low. Lich, no Nova anymore. There comes one more coil, thanks to the mana potion, but the Fiends all so hurt. Blade Master still completely untouched. Didn't require this invul potion at all just yet. The Shadowhunter with his immense amounts of mana able to pull off more and more healing, and now Shocker just simply doesn't have the numbers anymore. If the Lich falls, that must be game. He's got a heal potion here to survive a little bit longer, but Fiends can't use heal pots, and it's only a single one left now. Plus the heroes on Shocker's side. This is looking all but over. We have seen undead heroes by themselves do marvelous things, but the Blade Master is still around, still contesting, competing in damage. Nice TP transfer keeps the Lich alive. The heroes will survive this engagement, but the game is without chances anymore for the undead. GG, well played, and that it was. Well done by Knopf. Decisive 1 0. Yeah. And what a performance, especially in the early game. So sick. 
these blocks across the entirety of Northern Isles, resulting in two fiend kills. And yeah, if you go heavy fiends early, you need to keep them alive. That's the biggest downside against Orc of this build. Lots of stuff to attack, lots of stuff to kill, especially with the nice level late master and uh, shadow hunter with mana like this. So the game spiraled out of control quickly. Uh, Shocky yeah, says it as well. Bad early, well played by Knopf after the Orga of Oceanus just immediately complained about uh, the two items for the Shadow Hunter. <laughs> so fair play by Shocky, who's uh, restarting real quick. Yeah, that early game was really weird by Shocker, honestly. Like, if you want to go for these fiends, once you have two, three, maybe even four, you can creep super fast, but you need to make sure you get the levels. What he did was take the green camp first, which is a really weird camp to take, the Murloc camp, because it doesn't give you a good item or level two. And then he runs across the entire map trying to take the mirrored camp on the orc side. But if you get intercepted like he did and you don't have aura, that can become really problematic. So risking getting punished without aura, always a danger. That, to me, didn't look like the best thought out creep route, to be honest. Maybe his idea was get level 2 there, then go over to the enemy gold mine, steal that away, take it away from Shadowhunter or TC. That could perhaps be pretty good, but it is rather risky if you're going up against a strong orc, as we saw there. But seriously, that early game by Knopf was insane. Yeah. That, that game was almost won after 4 minutes. Yeah, I agree. Let's see how game 2 starts a little better. It's gonna be Shocky's map choice now. We are vetoing after he reboots his PC. Tomorrow we have no cast. Um, I guess, we, when will we start again? On Thursday? Um, yes. Okay. So Thursday is the next cast with the Huya Super League. Qualifiers are tomorrow till Wednesday. But we have to work, unfortunately. So we're going to skip that. But then we're back with four casts in a row. I think it's like $10,000 prize money for the Huya Invitational. It's going to be great. Looking forward to this, man. Four casts in a row. It's uh, finally feels like it's Warcraft season again. Finally yeah. feels like, you know, WGL days. Yeah. You remember the summer, Neo? Five weeks in a row. Oh, oh that, that was, was wonderful. <laughs> the summer where no one really was watching. No one was, like, supporting a lot. We had 700 viewers at 700 degrees in our rooms. Ah, that was... Summer season was... Oh, yeah. 42 degrees Celsius this year. I wonder if what record we're going to crack this year. Looking forward to that. It's only getting up, man. But this year I have new but, lights. But climate, climate change is just a theory, Neo. Remember. Yes, of course. It's of course. It's only <laughs> the sun, man. It's uh, the mood of the sun dictating the weather. No, I have new lights. They are LED now. So That's good. That's not better. the super hot light bulbs I had before. So I guess my room will be like 10 degrees lower or something. But I have four screens. Maybe that equalizes it again. Hmm. hmm. Maybe we need to install some air conditioning. <laughs> Esports air condition. So they're doing the vetoes here. Shocker vetoes Terranus first. You can score. And Echoals. He leaves in Twisted. Good lord. Seems like you don't agree. Alright, it makes kind of sense with his build. Um, with a fiend build because the nightmare on twisted is it's really good late game for orc because easy kind of easy expansions and creeps everywhere for the tc and you can steal your merc camp but also early game you can creep nothing with the ted fiend opening so i guess with his build it's not that bad okay we're waiting Question for is, hmm? isn't his build that bad though i'm not i'm not so sure man not so sure we'll see if he surprises us all the thing now is if knopf wins the next game this is three points for the Swedes. Whoever wins uh, or gets eight points takes the lead or takes the win in the clan war. Knopf is maybe the biggest favorite in the entire match. Not too sure. Yeah, I think so. So if Shocky takes the map here, it's already good for Oceans. I think side and or yeah I guess I wouldn't say like it's it's that one sided like shocker really can play well it's easy to discount him after game 1 saying like what was that bro you didn't have a wall off you had the wrong build you had the wrong creep route but you know some games we all know that feeling 
everything goes wrong. You're at the red camp. Suddenly your lich dies to the ogre lord. You know, we've all been there. <laughs> but uh, there's always going to be a game too. There's always going to be a next game to play better and have a better time. Right, Neil? That is absolutely correct. Everyone who grinds leather knows this. Yes, of course. <laughs> I do daily. So. Precisely. We even ready. cast at games where Lin lost his hero to the creeps. I remember that. Last Refuge. That was a while ago. But here we go. Game two. Knopf in the lead. If he gets the 2-0 here. Three-point jump is going to be very good. And that's perhaps a little bit of a cushion that they need because next coming up is Spiral versus Lil D. <laughs> that is not correct. Next up is the 2-2, two and two, actually. Oh, we're not going top to bottom. No, don't spread no. lies, you know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man. I was just trying to be logical and <laughs> follow a, a Being a logical with Warcraft players, follow. that doesn't go well. And yeah, we not? You, you know these folks. So, we talked a lot about TM, but we're on CH. Conceal the Hill, correct? One of our newer maps in the map pool with fountains. That's a specialty. And we mentioned the Ogre Lord briefly before. He is chilling in the middle and uh, will most likely be lured away from his friends to be abused alone. Kind of a sad life that he's leading, isn't it? Well, for the majority of the game, he has good company. And he's left alone. He's They are sleeping a lot, but apart from that, I think it's fine. He spends his life on the high ground, Rio. Overviewing his kin kingdom, kind of like Mufasa. You see those those kings and patriarchs that are just sitting around looking into the distance on their little hill. It always ends bad for them. What does that tell us, Neo? You <laughs> Don't need to also buy a house act. on the hill. Ah, you need to okay. act, not just observe and be satisfied with your accomplishments. But I like to observe Warcraft more than playing it. What does it say about me? Like, well, you're not just observing, though, are you? You're huh? uh, doing the production and casting and camera work, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, normally that one goes to the orcish side. Wonder how Knuff is gonna try to snipe that early. Over in Asia, we have absolute masters of the item snipe mini game. If you want to call it that. And that is mostly focus. Also, Lin, of course, good at that because Lin is good at everything. But focus really stands out with uh, some interesting techniques. He first did the hex abuse, which some people in chat felt very strongly about that. It's not supposed to be that way. We need to fix this or we need to ban this. Um, and I imagine Knopf most likely will try to do that as well. Orgs love doing that, don't they? Also on Twisted Meadows, the Rock Golem Creep. Blake Master sniping items everywhere. And if you find the right item, that can indeed be very good. The first item wasn't exactly what he wanted. The ring plus three is good for the TC. But not so good for early game for creeping. Because it doesn't give you damage. damage. But you can tank a little more. Maybe saves you a healed self or so in the long run. Slippers are nice though. So that makes up for it. Knopf with a normal early game. Blade Master one grunt. And Shocky again with his Fiend build, going heavy creeping as it's supposed to be with this. Lots of skeletons, two Fiends, surround with a Rock Golem. That's oh. pretty sweet. Cool. I haven't seen this before. And again, this is a build that nobody oh. plays outside of Shocker, so this most likely won't be anticipated. That's pretty cool. I mean, the Rock Golem walks out, but he's still gonna die. Costs some mana here for Shocker. Oh, Blade is coming. What? Knopf is scouting this? What a madman! <laughs> uh, Shocker plays it safe, has yeah. the dust available, yeah. uses it. Still prolongs, annoying though. Prolongs the life of the rock golem. And dust wears oh, off in a bit. And and boulder on the fiend. Grunt coming in as well, and Knopf wants to get the last hit. He got it, right? I think so, I'm not too sure. Or, Mana no, Potion goes to Shocky. 
I think Chucky got it actually. Yeah, two point five. Two yeah, yeah, yeah. So that cost only time. Well, that reminds me of the Enya song. Um, that's early two thousand. Now I feel old. You always feel old, dear. <laughs> So tier two finishes. Shadowhunter coming in. Question is Knopf, how quick do you want to tech? Is it gonna be tech before Beastery? Nope. Beastery first instant scout from the skeleton. A town is under As oh my god, Shocker, what did you do now? Look at this tech! This is even later than earlier! It must have been like a 26 supply tech. That's like 2008 meta. Well that's not true. I don't know what was meta in 2008, but it's like 2010 meta. You know, nostalgia is quite hip. Knopf oh, keeps this around. Close though. this grunt. Uh, this uh, oh, block is a little much. No way! No way! Oh! oh. <laughs> Despite the fountain, he still dies. Another fiend coiled through the forest, so it's in fighting shape again. Shocky's still. Fiend's quite hurt. Need to retreat. Blade Master is a one man army. Big mana pot consumed so early is also always painful. You want to save that for the big fight in the late game where it can win you games sometimes. Kind of surprised that Shocker is playing this so boldly. He must know the shadows right around the corner and with Hex speed scroll that could be more kills. He wants level 3 so bad. By the way, ABC, thank you for the 3 euro donation. Keep it up, you rugrats. Thank you. And Snare again. Seems to be a little bit of the fate of this series for Sharky. TP out now because of the Hex. Okay. So he got level 3 but paid with the TP. You know what? I can really s understand now, seeing this again, that people back in 2009, when this was the build, felt this game is unwinnable. <laughs> but we have a different build nowadays. It's called it's called the Ted Fiend build and it's, it's like so much better. It's so much better. Oh, can creep up a storm. How late is the lich? Oh, we still not tier two, so it's a late lich. That's another problem, right? Yes, you can creep fast, but this whatever he creeps now is pretty much wasted XP. Level four DK is okay, but level two lich is so much better. Yeah. Yeah. The the biggest level ups are always from one to two and from two to three. The other ones are nice, but th those are the massive ones. With some exceptions, with TC level 4 to 5, which, as we know, is pretty busted. But Knopf's scouting has been insane this yeah. game, by the way. And the DK has only one coil left. Blade Master. Oh, oh. he does get, doesn't get the item, but he hexes the DK, so he didn't get the experience. Yeah. But that doesn't matter that much. However, Knopf unwilling to engage. With losing one Grunt earlier, the army here admittedly is very small and Knopf is expecting the Lich to be out already. But as we said earlier, it is a super late Lich. Once again, by the way, more holes in the base than a Swiss cheese by Shocker, but this time not getting abused. Kind of a problem for Knopf that his Blade Master is not level 3, so only level 1 Wind Walk. That's fixed now. Two Raiders, Grow the Beast, Tier 3 is done, TC out, but... Yeah, level-wise, it's not looking too good for the sweep. Map is still big, you can still creep a lot. So that's okay, the two fountains are set up for grabs. When you lose efficiency with this orc tier 3 build, it does become noticeable. Like, whatever you do, you want to be effective, either to kill units or to creep stuff. But the last, or at least one or two minutes, the Shadowhunter was just spending walking around not creeping. So now he's only level 2, and that's not good. You really want level 3 on the tier 3 stage. However, Lich is only level 1 as well, so Knopf doesn't have to fear the Nova yet. TC is on the way. We'll be bringing the Lightning Orb, I imagine. This time, by the way, later Walker transition. No totem up just yet. Yeah, but tier 3 is so far away, and before tier 3 we won't see any Banshees, so the only thing he can dispel is Frost Armor. And if he doesn't want to fight, then it's not that big of a deal. And I think Shocky just became the hero of Chad because he went out of his way to pick up a tome uh, that Knopf left there at the laboratory. Knopf now at the fountain camp. Despite how much orgs like fountains, it's always weird to creep because you don't really have enough anti-air to take out the Drake quickly. 
but over time it will be good enough. TC is now coming in. He's bringing in with him some anti-air, which is the Orb of Lightning. And it seems like we're kind of splitting the map right now. Top left going to Knopf, bottom right, as it seems, to Shocker. I'm and amazingly, is... somehow Shocker got more of the map than Knopf did, if it's... this continues. It's close, but yeah, the other fountain still has creeps, also the expansion. Shocky with a decent lead, uh, no Book of the Dead this time, no Echo damage this time, no two Fiends lost this time. It's definitely looking better. He still doesn't have a tier 3 hero, which could be the Dark Ranger, could be a Pit Lord. Crypt Lord is in the build. Whoa, okay. That is definitely the most stylish of third hero options. <laughs> Wait, that's a Dreadlord, obviously. No, that's incorrect. But also, uh, the most level dependent. And creeps are almost all gone, so... We'll see how that goes. Oh, we oh, have no reinforced defenses. That's yep. so old school. A fiend dive onto the burrows. Reinforced defenses is finishing soon. Can he get one burrow? Not really. It should be another TP. Trying to nuke this blade. Reveal invul potion. Trying to slaughter more. Oh, this is not looking good for Shocky. And now the storm comes in a little too late to prevent the TP. So he trades the fiend for a raider. But good damage control by Knopf. Can still produce. Didn't lose too much. Forced a TP. Yeah, this was not a successful run by at all. Cost two units and a TP just for the Raider and a little bit of lost mining time. And Knopf has the lead when it comes to XP now. Turned it around once again. And there's yeah the important levels are missing for Shocky. Even though he has level 4 DK, but the Lich is the issue. Level 3 on the Shadow. Level close to two on the TC, went for Stomp first, Blade Master made it to the shop for another invul, and Shocky is so sure that there is an expansion for Knopf now, which there's not, that this is all more wasted time. I didn't have skeletons earlier, I guess, to check the top left gold mine. Would be really risky now to go for a run by into the main again without a TP, but he's getting a TP, and this is kind of what he has to do. He's in the top left, there's nothing here to do anymore, so you have to get something done. So once again, he has to look to the economy. He's actually trying to take the, out the shop first. Does he want to take a real fight? This is almost like an all-in fight. If he loses this fight and has to retreat, Knopf is going to Tiny Great Hall and most likely win the game. I guess that's why he wants to kill the shop, to prevent the Tiny Great Hall. I guess, but you can just, if you lose the shop, remake it, only takes a minute, and then you can still tiny. But Shocky seems to be getting away with the black eye, goes over to the green camp, and Knopf has lost sight of him. Double invul pot on Knopf. Shadow with really good mana, also a scroll of the beast. There is going to be a destroyer, but only one. And we do have decent anti-air at this point. Is this the 3-0 for the Soviet War Elite? Speed scroll by Knopf. Seems a little bloodthirsty. Can't really make a connection, neither with Hex nor with the Storm. The yeah, Raiders there in a weird position. Didn't quite get in range for the Ensnare, despite the speed scroll. The yeah. missing aura from the TC, perhaps. We have no Temple a of the Damned yet, by the way. This is going to be a lot of damage from Blade Master and Headhunters. Flute, of course, as well, boosts up the Titans to plus 8 with a level 2 Kodo Aura. TC has an invul, Blade has an invul, still the Scroll of the Beast. It's finally time for the Red Spot to fall, but item is already gone, so it's pure experience, which will not give him level 3, will not give him level 2, and he will be jacked. Raider scouts ahead, but Knopf's army is still far lacking behind, especially the Kodo, so he's hesitant to engage. Also, it's uh, Shocker with his back against the fountain, but in he goes regardless. First Impale hitting pretty nicely there, to be honest. TC looking for the big stomp, and he gets it on four of the Fiends. Damage now greatly minimized. Headhunters moving forward, looking towards the Destroyers, and the Purge are coming in for the Blade Master as well. Orb of Lightning really effective right here. One Destroyer will fall at the very least. It's level two for the TC. More will not be falling 
I think Shocker there got away with a black eye. That could have been a lot more expensive. I think he lost one fiend as well, I guess. Ah, it's in the stomach of the Kodo. Okay, well, then it's two losses. Those do hurt. And now Knopf may feel confident enough to finally go for that Tiny. Yeah, he has a peon already. And off to work we go. Tiny or tower? Uh, not Tiny, but Great Hall or tower? Or just be lazy. A little Remo peon. Ah, there we go. Tower placed and Tiny coming. 600 gold is affordable. Oh, the is he not doing it? Not he has to wait it. a little. Does he think he bought it? <laughs> Maybe. Scout makes sure that there's no undead expansion. He's still playing without banshees, right? Yeah, it's just fiends and statues. And Knopf without walkers. This is looking really old school. All right, 700 gold Knopf. Is it time now? Like Master was trying to find Shocker, but didn't quite manage to. So this can be a little bit awkward right now because Shocker once again knocking on the front door. Knopf didn't go for the tiny just yet. Instead, producing more Windrider it is now and more Berserker. So all out piercing damage. That is what renders the destroyers pretty useless in the late game. Mana potion this time on the Shadow Hunter. So again, a lot of heal waves to use. Can he prevent the Wyvern? I'm not even sure if there's web yet. Did he kill the dragon with the web? Could be, but... Okay, Beast Tree is gone. Speed Scroll is a little weird. Knopf is reaching around from the south, though. Hex again. Stomp is good. Statue down. We haven't seen an Impale yet. Nuke on the Torrent Chieftain, but Invo Potion to save him. What is the Crypt Lord doing? Did I miss the first Impale, or is it just not coming? He did hit it, and it wasn't too bad, but... Seemingly not enough. The TC kill might be coming in next. There was the second impale, and the TC could be nuked right now. The heal wave is on cooldown, and there we go. Colnuba TC dead. The problem is, once again, Chakra has lost almost all of his army. Kind of similar to game one, actually, how this is all unfolding now. More and more kills going the way of Knopf. Purge is coming in one after the next. If the next Kodo dies, however, oh, nice Hex preventing the coil. That was well done. Despite all his tankiness, when there's no healing, the Crypt Lord will die. Really well-timed hexes here by the Shadow Hunter. The first one on the Crypt Lord, the second one right there on the DK. Mana is super low now though on Knopf and that's kind of a problem. However, Shocky perhaps has the bigger problem with only 28 supply left. Rebuying the Crypt Lord from the tavern. That was pretty expensive. Not too sure if that does too much because there's no mana. The DK has no TP. Nothing. And so double kill. For the sweet GG, well played. Soviet War Elite take the lead with the three and oh. And Knopf showing again that he's in a very, very good shape. Yesterday, um, very good performance. In the Rising Star Cup. Today, winning his game flawlessly, pretty much. This insane block on game one. The big play from him. The bald orc got the job done. Yep, that was uh, very convincing indeed. I can understand Shocker to a certain extent. I also was really resistant for a while. I was like, why play Dead Fiend build? You have your fiends so late and you only have skeletons early on, but it has so many benefits. You can get level two much faster, much more reliably. You can harass more quickly. And most importantly, you can tech more quickly for a fast glitch. I simply think that is not the right approach anymore. We didn't see Shocker the way he can play. Shocker is normally yeah. much, much better. But today, Knopf was clearly better. Yeah, in the game against you, Matt, he was so sick. Not today, though. But Oceanus can still make it. They have side left, Neutron and Spiral and the 2-2. Two two. We will see Shocky again in the 2-2, two two, which is coming up. Thorzen in star shape versus Neutron. And Shocky is next. So stay tuned. We're going to a little break to catch some breath. And then Oceanus versus Sweden continues. Well... Series number three, can Oceanus strike back? These are two of the best two-on-twos in all of Europe. Clashing now on Hellfire Plateau. That's the map with the nice little uh, mushroom trees. Sweden vs. Oceanus continues. Knopf won his match 2-0. and oh, And that is why the Swedes have the 3-0 th uh, lead. In the red, Thorzane 
the star player of Sweden in the upper left, star shaped here with the nickname star out of shape. Doesn't seem to be too confident going into this. Shockey playing a second set after being uh, demolished by Knopf pretty much. Quite a tough task for him now to get the momentum back, but as an ally with Neutron, that's his big strength. One on one, he kind of plays when no one else is available and two on two, he's uh, the standard, the constant, for Ocean is so I am super hyped about this. Yep, it's gonna be a fun 2v2 here from the 2v2 star teams. Star Zane and the other super powerful team from Ocean is. Thor Zane here with his classic build. Thor Zane is the most renowned parley rifle player in the world, right? I think that's fair to say. Yeah, I think so too. Playing it here once again. Going for the Paladin, going for the Reflements. And probably later on, with some uh, higher tech tier 3 inner fire stuff, maybe as well. We'll see. Question is, is that going to be supported by a keeper or a podum from Mr. Out of Shape? Going to be a keeper. Much less impactful later on, but in the early game, certainly very good. And that is the idea here. Star Shape is going to secure the early game with keeper and hunts. And then... Thorzane is going to come in later on with the Pally Rifles and the high levels and the high DPS to pew pew everything from far range. This is quite interesting because in the Asian clan wars we have seen that every combo that includes Night Elf is very timing dependent the later the game the weaker the Night Elf because we've seen a lot of uh, headhunters, we've seen a lot of rifles and then you know against piercing damage. These hunts don't do too much. The only combo that looked kind of strong was Night of Undead. But the strongest was Human Orc by far. We don't see that here. So might be a little more balanced. I still wonder what's better. But yeah, quite interesting to see two Night Elves in a 2 and 2 And that's very rare to say. At TH and Infi not too long ago were playing very successfully in their 2v2s as well. That's also a human... Night Elf combo between the two of them, but they play very differently. Yes. They don't play parry rifles and mass hunts. They play like tier two timing focused with rifles and uh, was it maybe hunters or dry or something like that? Very different play style. The parry rifles, it's been forever since I saw it anywhere on Asia, but Thorzane really likes it. And Thorzane, as has been seen many times in our highlight videos, has some slick plays up his sleeve. By the way, in the human orc mirrors, it was uh, romantic being more successful with his Pally second rifle Players build compared to the mass casters of the rogue warriors. So riflemen definitely have a very good position in 2 and 2. So does the paladin because of the devotion aura, which shall not be underestimated. Thorzei is opening up his gold mine, level 2 for the paladin as well. Pretty tame early game like no one is really harassing not even the keeper keepers and yeah, that's weird like normally you want to creep heavily if you want to accelerate your heroes and bank on them in the late game keeper is not a late game hero not at all but maybe they felt that the two night elves are spawning close to each other and then when they harass each other it just cancels out kind of with the keeper dealing with the keeper and the wisp just detonating anyways the creeping continues, but the first aggressive play is going to be by Neutron saying hello at the natural. Should be able to pick up one of the archers here, which is going to be our first blood. Doesn't quite get the deny off there, Mr. Star-shaped. Thorzen with a really early expansion, that surprised me. I was certainly expecting at least a tier 2 tech to then get long rifles and blood mage most likely. Thorzen also an insane blood mage player, yeah. one of the best. And he's messing up his resources a little. Too low on Lumber, can't continue with the power build for a second. There's an expansion by Neutron as well, opened up by Shocky. So maybe not to be expected here in this position. Sneaky plays by Ocean is. Got a really good risk scout. Star-shaped here, saw Shocker coming. Otherwise, if this hadn't been seen, these four fiends could have wreaked havoc over at the Players expo. But now the Pally is here to defend along with a couple of Wisps. And since neither hero here is level 3, there's not a big advantage really to be had. But Paladins heal 
is a little bit cheaper. There's Militia close by from the main, I guess. And Thorzin easily secures his second base. In the meantime, in the south, Starshape got a return kill with an entangled surround on an enemy Huntress. His Huntress numbers are much higher. That means Neutron is teching, I imagine. Oh, no, he's not. He's expanding. Ah, oh, yeah, right. He's expanding. A player's force Next to the Dune Worm. Attack. One of the cuter critters. Sleep on the Paladin. Not an easy creep spot that is here at the shop. Chaos damage. Is it this one with the summons? No, it's the red. No, chaos. right? It's, yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's not the That's the one that can kill like 50 supply Oh, armies, speaking but... of a kill, Neutron finds himself in a surround. That's the TP gone after, I don't know, six minutes oh, or so. Waking up the Eridar guys. Yeah, but he's really good. <laughs> oh, there we go. Parasite coming yep. in for the first time. But I don't think it's enough. Or does it kill him? I think it's lethal. Yeah. But maybe I'm wrong. But Let's it see. says if it dies while still afflicted. Yeah. Might not be lethal then, I guess. Maybe it lasts forever. Oh, no, it doesn't last forever, but it's still like 100 damage plus. Yeah. It is lethal. There we go. Lesser White Walker. Hello. He was so close to the Moonwells. 100 is down, but there's going to be more, many more to replace them. Thank you. TP forced, by the way, by a shocker here. That is was not what I was expecting. Paladin was already level three. Another so fight. Nice, nice little thing. Uh, thank you very much, the Engineer TV for the three month reset. Wish you guys a good 2020. Love watching your cast daily. You are a role model for all the viewers out there. And Julian as well with a five euro donation. Happy 2020. I'm drunk again. Well, that happens to you quite a bit, I guess. Nice owl and thank you, of course. Uh, nice owl by Neutron to get that kill. Attack. Both have this expo up. Starshade with an ancient protector against Neutron's expansion. He knows what's up. Not saturated here. A little slip. Double slaughterhouse by Shocky, by the way, and a tier three tech. What? But That's really surprising. Yeah, but lots of rifles making their way over. A town is under siege. Could certainly be a cancel. Shocker is stuck in the middle here, creeping up still. It gets level three now, finally. Oh, the lich, One the block. Oh, Thorzane, you oh, know my how God. to surround for sure. Holy light there as well. This lich is dead. Dude, that was a sick play. <laughs> that was pretty sexy. Yep. I have to say. Shocky wants to make up for it, but two fiends are hurt. One can be called, one gets holy lighted. Expo's still up, though. And there's another fight with the Keeper and the Keeper. Knight of Mirror in the south. Neutron lost his TP already. He cannot afford to get out of there. Oh, no. Not good for Ocean. Is Lich dead, Keeper dead. Free reign for Thorzane. And that even rhymes. There's an AP up here as well to help Thorzane in this little attack. This is by no means all in, but it's a nice pressure play. It's uh, range damage with healing versus range damage with healing. Pretty mirrored here between the two. Riflemen do have better damage than Fiends. fiends and also better upgrades here. Fiends and the aura, so the advantage should definitely be with Thorzane. Also higher numbers, most importantly. Seven rifles versus four Fiends. Only eight rifles now. My goodness. Thorzane's pushing on the rifle button. Glitch is back, Nova now, but only on the hero, DK. Oh my, these uh, rifles gunning down the DK. Bullets raining down on him and he has to TP. He's like 10 meters away from the base, but there's no way out. Nova again on a hero. Neutron is coming in for the rescue, but it's also a little too late. What I never really thought about before, Thor's name was playing Terran in StarCraft 2. And rifles control kind of similarly to marines. You can start a step really easily with them. And we kind of see it here. Oh my god, they're destroying these huntresses. Yep. Not Sick. even close. But the pally's out of mana now, and this is usually where it starts turning around. Also, we have the orb now coming in. GG. Neutron got wrecked in the south in a 1v1 versus Oscar Starshake. Oh wow. We didn't really catch that, but. That game didn't go well for Oceanus either. Shocky losing the one-on-one -on -one and now Starzane taking the lead as well. 4-0 and o for the Swedes. And we thought the Knight of Mirror in the south wasn't, wouldn't be uh, the most important one, but it was enough to break Neutron. Yeah. Classic pe uh, keeper play. You entangles around the first time, force him to TP back. 
You entangle around him a second time, kill him off, and then kill everything else. It can be so easy sometimes. And it's really time now for Oceanus to kind of uh, minimize the losses here to... Yeah. What's that called? Button down the hatches? No, that's not, not quite correct. Button but yeah, down. need to start turning it up here. Batten down the hatches. That's the one. And because if they lose the next one as well, that's a six-point lead for Sweden. That is almost unrecoverable. We will see all five games here today as it's more or less a show match. But still, out of honor on the line. Uh, it's, I mean, still, Spiral is coming. Uh, side is still coming. Neutrons one-on-one -on -one is still coming. This is... One of the best one-on-ones played for Sweden, and in two and two, they are so strong. Fun to see that, like Star Shaped again, doing so well. Like two semifinals in Rising Star Cup here, being one of the leaders. Yeah, I mean Thorzein did great against Chalky, but that was to be expected. But Neutron should have the upper hand in a one-on-one -on -one mirror. Against Starship, but uh, the sweet teacher keeps on surprising us. Yeah, and this Night Elf Undead combo, is it just me or does it only look good when it's fighting together? It's kind of well, also what it used to be like in the past, right? You either go for Keeper Hunts or Potom Hunts and then you have the Hunts frontline and the Fiends behind and they put out the damage. The in rifle the combo early game, could work similarly. In the early game, I feel like the Night Elf has to harass to buy the time. But afterwards, yeah, absolutely. And I was really surprised yet that Starshade was winning the 1v1 in the bottom. That should have been more or less of a wash. Neutral making perhaps a few mistakes there. But even if it's a wash, in the north, it should be working out pretty well for Thorzin because with the aura, with the Holy Light advantage, that's normally something that should be going well for the humans. So it, I like the strategy here by Starzane, basically. Forcing the two 1v1s, where one should be a wash, where it actually was one, in the Swede's favor. And the other one should be going well for Thorzane. So made sense on paper as well. But some 2v2 maps are more prone to turn into two separate 1v1s, like Hellfire Plateau, yeah. like Twisted Meadows. So I would imagine now to see a map from Ocean as where more... Two versus two, true two versus two, is normally the way the game goes. Like Synergy, like Turtle Rock. Synergy like is vetoed by Oceanus. Thorzane vetoes Twisted. So we have Featherwill, Nullwood, Lost Temple, and Turtle Rock remaining. Oh, I'd love to see LT. Haven't seen that in a long time. Dude, in the Chinese clan war, they played LT Frozen Throne. What? Yeah. <laughs> no tavern, right? No, wait, that one has a tavern, the other one. Um, not sure. I, I don't think so. It just has different creeps. It still has no tavern. Hmm. Is it the same items and everything? Nope. <laughs> it's all different. Creeps are That's different, quite... drops are different. That's quite confusing. It was. I don't like that. So, Lost Temple out, Turtle Rock out. We see Featherwill or Norwood or both. I mean, those are the two maps left, right? So, uh, Feather, Featherwill it is. Yeah, Featherwill it is. Decided by Mr. Nate Po. Or he's just a spokesperson and Chucky is making the decisions. We don't know. I don't even know if they're in voice together. Isn't Newton streaming as well? We could find out. Is Neutron streaming at all? Yeah, he was earlier, but he's not I anymore. I haven't seen his stream in forever. I've watched it sometimes. Fun stream. Fun stream, good stream. I can't imagine, like, Neutron is so funny. Yeah. Some legendary cast with this guy. Oh my god. Starshade is in the game. <laughs> Selected his race, selected his team. What the fuck? This never happened ever. This must be someone else. 
He hasn't given his ready yet, so... Well, Thorzein said ready, so hopefully everyone is indeed ready and it's stuck, not stuck uh, in the restroom. We go to map two, Featherville. What are the newer maps as well? Which seems to quickly becoming a 2v2 favorite. Been seeing it more and more in W3IL. Thank you very much. The Tommy chat with a 33 month resub saying Walker 3 yay. <laughs> and Mati Kuchen, 31 months. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. And wait, this is. Okay, this is a little confusing because I can't really do the colors any justice. Uh, but the red is Sweden on the right hand side and the yellow is Oceanus. Uh, the two and two overlay is still uh, yeah, work in progress, I guess. Shocky in the bottom left again with his fiend build order as always. Neutron in the north again the question uh, if keeper or pardon. Thorzane, no questions asked here. It's the rifle pally build and for star shaped. Same question as for Neutron, Potom or Keeper. It's interesting that 2v2 is that almost always we see the Keeper because it's easy to fall behind with a Potom. I imagine we're going to see Double Keeper again. Indeed, we do. But in Night Elf 1v1, that used to be the consensus for a long time as well. You don't want to play Potom first because you may want to run into a Keeper and then he just entangles your hunts and you lose him and then the game's over. But in 1v1, Night Elf adjusted with always bringing Wisps into the middle of the map, and with that being able to detonate and to save the Huntresses. But in 2v2, haven't really seen that attempted. I guess it's much harder in 2v2 to always have Wisps in position, considering the maps are big, and there's two opponents to worry about, and two allied bases, including your own. So I guess it would be pretty hard to make work. So no surprise, I guess, to see the Keeper. Here we have, also no surprise, on Thor's inside, the Pally rifle build again. Is he... Has he played anything else against Undead ever, by the way? In what we've seen? In one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah. Mm. Yes, he... Against Wan, he had Footman. Ah, oh, yeah, he was... Right, 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 on Twisted. With one or two surrounds, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why... Wan quit Oceanus so he doesn't have to play Thorazine again in the game for third. That would be so sad. I hope not. <laughs> Wan, you're missed. I hope we come back. So, creeping starts. Heroes are out. Thank you very much. Drikami for the 22 month resub. Thanks for your continuous support. Almost two years. Keep it up. A player's forces are under attack. And again, such a passive early. Yeah. Slow and steady wins the race, I guess. However, the spawning positions are different this time, in case such in that uh, Star Shape is close to the Undead base, and Neutron is close to Thorzane's base, so it's not going to be most likely a Night Elf mirror poking at each other, but rather involving the other races. Neutron was creeping up to level 2, same as the case here for Star Shape, and now with Entangle, perhaps, action is going to begin. Because uh, finding kills. On either of these sides, Undead and Human, early on, can be very beneficial. Taking out rifles, same as taking out fiends early, is quite uh, the feat. And quite the treat. And may I meet? <laughs> Who would you like to meet? All the people in the world. Um, Leif Schreiber. He's an actor. Ah. Okay. Why? He seems like a super chill dude. <laughs> okay, that's, a, that's the most boring reason I can imagine. Who would like, you meet? Kanye would be super fun. Oh, dude. Just too... I mean, I like, I like seeing Kanye in interviews for five minutes, but then I'm like, <laughs> oh, dude. It's starting to get difficult. Now, I would like to have a chat with Joe Rogan because I don't talk too much, but maybe Joe Rogan is the best in bringing out interesting answers from his interview partner. So I would love to see what he gets out of me. So maybe it's Joe Rogan. That sounds pretty narcissistic, bro. <laughs> I would love to see how I am with Joe Rogan. 
<laughs> yeah, like... It, I mean it the other way around, though. But whatever. Nice save by Star Shape. For this wisp into a building. Oh, the creeps get it in the end. Somehow the Niles have found each other again. How weird is that? <laughs> yeah, like across the map. They were yeah. destined to meet at one point. Level 2 entangled early here on Starship. That should be the next Huntress kill. And Starship has the benefit that he has Wisps nearby, so he can always detonate against the enemy keeper. So this looks like quite the risky play by Neutron, actually. Oh, does he get the surround as well? He has the dust, but not quite the surround. But don't need the surround when you have the entangle. And that's the second Huntress falling. Um, I like the addition of Neutron to go for the staff. Otherwise, this would have been the TP again. Oh, and he still forced it somehow. Nice block from the Treants as well. So the Huntress can't really reach. And now it's the other way around, but not in range for an entangle. Also, no mana. In the meantime, Thorzain says hello to Neutron's base. Taking out a few wisps here. I think he got a two so far. And is forcing a TP back. Who is it? It is the undead. Shocker coming back. Thorzen's kind of stuck here now. He's gonna decide to TP out, trying to save all of his rifles. One is gonna die, thanks to the level two coil. But that was a TP forced. For a TP forced plus a rifle. Yeah, but it's more Pretty time good, for Thorzen ex experience. Uh, experience, expansion. Uh, Neutron only now catching up to it. Feels like the timings aren't the greatest again for Oceanus. How about the text though? Just started for Thorzane, nothing on the way. Oh, tier 3 already for Sharky. Contraire to the one on one. He's the one with the fastest tech, which is more normal. Oh, but Star Shape. Smelling this, expecting this, killing this. And that's not good. That is something that really has big impact throughout the course of the game. And did Neutron decide to TP over here to try to save it? And the save didn't work out. Poor Oceanus, man. Nothing seems to be working. Yep. Yeah, I agree. This entire clan war so far is very, very, very one-sided. I mean, the Swedes were pretty much practicing two days straight for this to win the extra 30 bucks. And it pays off. Thor's in creeping up a storm here with the pally rifle. That's always easy. Once you have like six rifles, you can creep pretty much anything anywhere. Gonna be level four for him. Nice and quick. Tier two is late. So the blood mage is late, but uh, pally is gonna be very strong. And so will the rifles getting more and more upgrades. And Starshade's job is pretty simple. Deny the expansion, buy time, be disruptive. Try not to lose everything. And then let Thor's do the heavy lifting. A little reach around by Neutron. But his ally is not doing the sandwich with him. So it's again a Knight of Mirror. With the lead for the Russian. Oh, sweet lightning shield. That's a little AoE, but killed immediately. One for one trade, while the others are just uh, creeping up. Nice concave by Neutron. Slightly has more mana here, though. A lot more mana, especially with the wand. So this should be working out okay for him. But still, the numbers here are not looking too good. But more hunters is coming in from the main. Thank you, by the way, Donald Trump fan, for the one euro donation. Starship finding more and more kills. Close to level four. Oh, that one is saved. We have a little clash steel. Steel. in the middle. Thor's then getting greeted by a Nova. That's an insta kill. Almost level four DK. Lich level two with a claw. Nice one. But Starship in the south has another entangle and gets another kill. And another one. Oh, wow. Neutron is having a tough 2v2, yeah. man. Boy, oh boy. Shocky has to carry now. And that's not easy in a one-on-one -on -one against Thorzane. Nova's hit again and again and again. But it's only one left in a bit. If the blood mate doesn't arrive out of nowhere. Brave DK. Shaking hands with the rifles. Pally close to five. And then the nuke becomes super severe. And Starshape is like, okay, I killed the expansion, or can't cancel it rather. I forced Neutron away from here. I'm gonna see what more I can do. And some of the buildings are exposed in Shocker's main. Gonna force a response here pretty soon. Shocker, in fact, gets around. It has to TP away from the middle. 
back to his base, and there will easily force Star Shaped away. But Star Shaped's fine with that because mm -hmm. now the Swedes are on two, no, four bases versus only the two by Oceanus, and that does not seem very good at all for the Oceanus boys. Thank you very much, fuck Donald Trump and his fans for the one euro donation. Yep. I like your nickname, my friend. Political favoritism, Neo. L5 Pally moving across. This is really scary right now. Oh, and Thorzane once again looking to cancel an expansion. It's just not coming up, man. It's just not finishing. I know that feel. Things not coming up. Nova, Coil... And most likely two kills here now with the Crypt Lord. But there's a little siege going on in the north. All of a sudden there's uh, many things happening at the same time. So hard job for the camera, man. So who can deal with Thorzane? It certainly doesn't look like it's Neutron. So it kind of has to be Shocker. And there we go. Shocker comes back. But that means Starship can go back in again in the south. But Thorzane certainly has to leave. Question is how much is he going to lose? One rifle, two rifles. Not even too bad. Killed two hunts on himself on the way out. And guess what? Starship again in the south. Yeah, really good timing. I'm so surprised that Oceanus took another 2v2. Uh, or like these, what can we call it? Split push maps. After what happened in game one. TP out at the perfect time if he gets the slaughter. How? Oh, wow. Starship's timings are so good. This entire series, we didn't mention it too much in the first set, but he just knows when he should be annoying, when he can be annoying. Has his expansion up as well for quite a while, so it's four bases versus five bases versus two. I'm kind of surprised they're not at a hundred supply already, or Thorzen isn't at a hundred supply already. Only thing they're missing is like a shredder. We oftentimes say one shredder is infinite lumber. How many bases can one shredder support? <laughs> I don't know, man. Probably like four. One shredder is probably going to be enough for all of this golding. I knew these uh, math for the settlers and NO1602, but with shredders and mass gold mines, not my cup of tea. You mean settlers of Catan? Uh, no, the settlers, the PC game. Oh my god. That was like a million years ago. Settlers too, man. Building attacked. roads everywhere. The town is under siege. It was so cute, Remo. That game has such a beautiful art style. I think I played it like five hours. And that was it. Don't remember too much. I remember in Anno, when you didn't, didn't stop people from automatically upgrading their houses, suddenly you didn't have uh, tools anymore, and then it was GG. <laughs> yeah. That was a fun mechanic. <laughs> Okay, we have a defense here at Star Shaped's expansion, going for a nuke on the Paladin level 5. That's an interesting choice to say the least. Nice impale, but it's hard to miss in 2-on-2, two two, so they're throwing all their damage on a Paladin. And perhaps that was the best bet, but he was given an invul potion and with that survives at least for a little bit in the meantime. The rifles are gunning down everything, but one of them even has inner fire because guess what, we have an Ogre Magi in the mix. Keeper almost dying there, barely survived. Bloodmate doing a good job. Mana stealing, he gets holy lighted, but perhaps it's not enough. Someone DPS coming in, but the banish might save him, and oh. the heal comes in on top. Bonus heal so from the holy light. Well played, guys. GG, and with that, 2 0, and with that, 6 0 in this clan war for Sweden. S Sweden did everything right in this game. Was there one mistake? Really good timing for the expansion, uh, really good harasses by Starshape, the fight was phenomenal with Banish, Holy Light, save timings. There was, there was no match for Oceanus today. And Chucky and Neutron, as I said, one of the best 2-on-2 two two teams, but all of a sudden, it's Sweden 6, Oceanus 0. Yeah, it seemed like that strategically just didn't work out. The one v ones being fought, the two one v one v ones uh, on the two opposite sides of the map. Was Oceanus not ready for that? I don't know. That looked weird. But these clan wars, we've seen a lot 
of comebacks in these W3IL Clan Wars. We have another donation, $3 by World War 3. It's your time at the moment, huh? Thank you very much. And we go into a little break before we go into the next one-on-one, -on -one, which will be Echo Isles. This means Thorazane versus Neutron. See you in a bit. Game three. This is match points already for Sweden. They could take the bronze medal right here, right now, and get the money to pay for their pizzas and salads. We have two of the strongest players of each roster. Russia versus Sweden here. The not anymore only Russian in Team Ocean is, as uh, you educated me, that please was picked up. I completely did not notice this uh, during the Christmas break. It was like Ocean's little Christmas uh, gift that please joined, but the Russian Night of Constant in Ocean is, is spawning here on the left hand side and is one of the coolest guys in the scene. It is Neutron. He has to step up his game man. he has to save his team, but He's up against the Goliath in European Warcraft, and uh, that's the Doctor, Dr. Thorzane. Yeah, Thorzane's a really strong player despite not being too active recently, because he really is a doctor. That's not just a title we have given him. He actually literally is a doctor in a hospital, and if you've ever been in a hospital, they work a lot. So he doesn't have that much time, unfortunately. And yes, he is very strong indeed, but I don't think this is his strongest matchup. His strongest matchup seems to be against Undead. Very contrary to pretty much any other human, and he has said this before in interviews as well, that against Night Elf oftentimes he doesn't really feel like he knows what to do. And I think he said the same about the game against the matchup against Orc as well, if I remember correctly. And we have seen that sometimes in the past. I remember we casted some qualifier and he lost pretty decisively to Hunter. And this is not supposed to be shade towards Hunter, but... There, he really was supposed to be winning pretty clearly, but he didn't. Now, that was some time ago, admittedly. But again, this didn't look like the strongest matchup for Thorzain for quite a while. We'll see what it looks like now. In the past, of course, it was mostly Keeper all the way. But nowadays, more and more people are returning to Demon Hunter, and so is Neutron, starting off with a Mercenary Creep, an Equiles Classic, with a Classic Hero Demon. Yeah, this is a, as you say, classic matchup. Night Elf versus Human on Echo Isles. You know how much I love this. Especially with Warden or Demon Hunter. Thorzane going to his bottom right expansion right away. Pretty brave, but the base to expansion distance is one of the biggest in Warcraft. So there should be some time, especially with the Mercs. But once this creep spot for Neutron is done and he gets the Shadow Priest and the Berserker, it's a pretty powerful force that the Russian might be able to throw against this expansion. Always the nice thing on maps with early Merc Camp for Night Elf. You don't have to root your Ancient of War so long to produce archers because you can substitute your army with Shadow Priest and with Berserker. Oftentimes we will see both players attack. trying to steal that Berserker, spam clicking once it turns 1900 hours when the Berserker becomes available. And yeah, instant expansion by Thorzane. Was this scouted? I don't think it was, right? He plays perfectly against it, though. He's playing Huntress. With the sneaky half-proxy Huntress Hall. I don't think Thorzain saw this. Okay, that can work. But it's not like it's a blind build order win. It's, it's pretty all-in. It is super all-in. It's mega all-in. And, uh... The thing about all this, there's no transition. Nice deny from the footy. Demon trying to go towards the expansion, looking what he can do. Thorzane is splitting up his forces, trying to cover all the angles. Footies are now over at the expo, which seems to be a little bit late. Maybe he was out of lumber there for a little while, but he's about to be finished now. Neutron confirms. If this was foggy, there would be coming up a tree of life now somewhere. But this is not foggy. Nope. He's bringing wisps. There's the first indicator that uh, this is not foggy. Is he AP pushing this right away? Neutron needs the Berserker. It's available now. I'm surprised he's not going for it yet. He's also, him second Shadow oh, Priest is really good against AM. Neutron is supply stock. He's at 30. That's it. Sells the TP, getting boots. Okay. Going all in, I guess. Canceling the tower is a big deal. That's a really big deal. 
And Thorzing not protecting it right now. Was Thorzing really considering going for the Merc Camp? That would have been very dangerous. And that's the thing when you instant expand, you're going to be under a lot of pressure after whether you're getting all in or not. And getting level 3 AM, really difficult after this. Level 3 AM is the big cornerstone that you want to hit against Huntresses. That plus towers is what keeps you alive. Towers are coming, Lumber Mill is in the works. And now it's going to be up to Thorzane to defend these towers. Mana burn over and over, even for six summoned the water elemental before so nice mana burn deny something there's a lot of wisps close to thorzane's expansion but he can't really find a spot to put up towers now the moon is finished now we get the berserker and the next shadow priest and the first tower so neutron gathering some forces stalling more time but it's of course also time for footman and towers here comes the Berserker finally. That's a lot more DPS being added into this army. Wonder if Thor is now going to go for defend. Not yet at the time. At the moment, it's just footies, footies, footies. This would be a big tower cancel. If Neutron can get it, the Claws are helping out right now. It's mass repair. Trying to keep this guard tower alive. If this one stands, it's going to be really hard for these Hunters to do much anymore. And the tower stays up. Crucial moment. Mass repair. Every single peasant coming in. To help out right there but that's the first tower up and that's normally the beginning of the end for the huntress push yeah you know what's good against upcoming towers piercing damage you know what neutron has in his army quite a bit of piercing damage but you know what was distracted by two footmen in the left hand side every single unit with piercing damage so demon hunter and huntress couldn't cut it alone and that's a very well fortified base already Archmage is still far away from level 3. This is, of course, time for the AP. But is that enough to break this base? Oh, Thorzane sees the AP as it's rooting. Could easily cancel the one coming up. Decides not to. Interesting choice. I don't know about that one. Um, I think that was a big mistake. That looks like a big mistake. Archmage, yep. super. he has to TP out or, de or is dead. I'm not too sure if there's a shop in the main. I don't think so. There is one. Oh, He's okay. also stuck in the main, I believe. Uh-oh. Uh, no. Got the SimCity down, but the Demon Hunter is coming. There's no tier 2. Swoop. That TP was oh. for nothing. And all of a sudden, it doesn't look too bad for Neutron at all. Well, there's two guard towers up in the south, and they can be repaired here with all the peasants. There's a third guard tower about to finish. It's, this is a lot of defense. Thorzane needs to repair, though, quickly. Thorzane seems to be a little overwhelmed right now. There's lots of stuff going on. Of course, Demon committing in deep. He doesn't have a TP anymore. Neutron oh. needs to be careful. <laughs> Such a cloudy game. I wonder if he transitions to Glaives or something to just break the towers. APs are doing a pretty good job so far. Oh, they started attacking. Why is Thorzy not calling militia? Well, it's He's okay. Got so but... many peasants from the main. But three towers are still standing in the south. There's still mining here. There's still a couple of footies here. AM's gonna be back in a bit. Demon healing up in the main. But needs to run a long way back across the entire map. Defend is coming in. That's gonna be a big game changer for these footies. And both are attacking. But the tech is definitely better for Thorzane in general. Like, he can get rifles, he gets defenders, you mentioned. Second hero should be better for him as well. And uh, that was a pretty expensive tier one for both of them. But the good thing for Neutron is he has something that he can build on at tier two. For Neutron, not so much. Except the level four Demon Hunter that he gets now. But no repair, gives up the protector. And the base is still not broken. Far away from being broken. Immolation even coming Ooh. in now. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, the defense is not good if you don't have footwork. Yeah, this might actually be working out. This is like really close right now. Demon is getting burned though from the arcane. He's completely going to be out of mana here in a moment. That means no more mana burn against the AM. Who now can make use of more water elementals. He's kind of close to level three as well. A lot of these units are very hurt, though. For Newton, he breaks another tower, but it costs a lot of HP on his units. I'm so surprised we still don't have Militia coming in, by the way. It's quite a fun game. I mean, it's by far not a perfect game from neither of the players, but 
It's action pack from minute one on. Archmage again that. being chased. No TP anymore. Boots on the Demon Hunter. <sighs> Makes it to the shop this time, I guess. If there's not like super high roll damage values, but okay. Potion. It was quite a bit of an investment. Mountain King on the way. Double Sanctum. Rifles out too. But no mining going on anymore. And the next tower will be broken as well. Dorsen can save a little bit of gold here though. Call to arms and then TP to the south. And that should definitely free his expansion once again with the MK coming. But he's just calling militia normally, not needing to invest into the TP, I guess. And the AM is here, close to finally reaching level 3. Demon in the main, by the way, makes use of the moon juice. That was the last bit of the moon juice. Nothing after this one. He's not taking Naga the second now, though. That's a big addition for Neutron. And the Keeper, ah, uh, the MK, excuse me, coming for Thorzin. Only level one, of course, against the level two mana burn. And this expansion is at 50%. I think Thorzin could perhaps just transition into one gate base game, though, as weird as that sounds. Level three, finally, for the AM. It's falling. Lore is only now finishing, and a tier three tech. So we're not getting mass riots, which I like, but rather a bear slash mountain giant play. Wouldn't a blood mage have been better? It's not yes. gonna be mana on the mountain king. Like blood mage is the more normal choice at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's mostly played in these one base push kind of games where you can creep reliably. But, uh, yeah, MK against Demon never really feels good. Wait a minute, he doesn't have a TP, though! <clears throat> if he gets surrounded here, he keeps on getting slowed. This could be his end, but the slow is wearing off. Whoo, that was a scary moment for Neutron. And the Naga has counter slow, if you want to call it that. So, yeah, Expo broken. Big attack. investment into it. We're getting bears. Tier 3 at 40%. Neutron, the last remaining hope for Oceanus. Or the last straw for Ocean is for now. Keeps his team in the race for the bronze medal. Hunts, archers all low. Two berserkers, good damage. Close to level 5 arch uh, demon hunter. And Thorzin kind of trapped on his side on the map. Yeah, question is does he want to expand again? That doesn't seem very wise. With two APs down there and the hero level deficit. That he finds himself having. Demon is almost level 5, man. He's been leveling like crazy. Fighting now over the marketplace. Should be it. by Neutron, I guess. He doesn't... Maybe he doesn't want to play against the rifles. So he gives Thorzain the spot and level 3 and the potion. Are under attack. But more time for bears. And it's not... Like critical mass rifles. It's only six. No double racks, rather double sanctum. Could see some sneaky invis plays with the Mountain King. I like that Neutron starts denying some of his huntresses. These are absolutely trash at this stage in the game. Expensive certainly to replace by bears, but at least those do something. Master training will be coming in in a bit. It's already 30% done. And Archmage yeah, makes it to the shop. How much gold to his disposal? Oh, I can go for the invul. Therefore, prevent the mana burn. Big mana for this mountain king. Maybe we see more stone balls than we thought we were. Oh, and Thorsten is bringing down the militia into the south to take out the towers. That certainly looks like an expansion once again. And that could be the perfect timing that Neutron is looking for. It could be breaking into upkeep right now and then hit with 60. Or just counter expand. Feels more like a counter expand, but there's no wisp nearby. It's one at the mercenary can. He's also not too high on gold. Oh, that demon is so strong. Yep. If he picks up an orb of venom. Yep. He's gonna be sick. And he's at the attack. base. He's close to having the necessary gold if he sells something. Not even necessary. Just there we go. Out. Oh boy! He's really scary right now. Yep, damage machine, DH. Pendant of energy for the mount. 
Dude, that's a lot of mana. But he needs a little bit more experience for level 3. And it could really be an important play, as you said, to deny the Huntress. Because they fall instantly in this fight. That could be the missing experience for level 3. And then Stormbolt. Mm -hmm. Does Dothan have clap, by the way? Uh, no, it's Bash. But he has an Invis Footman scouting. Seeing th uh, Neutron's movement. Really sneaky, really good. Yeah, I thought you were thinking about going for the Gargantian Turtle Camp in the south. Getting level 3 with that, perhaps. And level 4. Oh my god, he's so close to big, big level ups. But this is the big push. This is the next all-in by Neutron, pretty much. <laughs> yes. But it's 50-50. Thor's in slightly above 50. Can't really reach for a mana burn. Bears are 0, zero. Rifleman 1 0. Neutron is taking his time. There's two bears still in production from the main. But until they arrive, that's going to take forever. We have a staff, we have an orb, we have an anti magic. We get an in. Oh, a staff. Okay, to staff back into the fight if he gets staffed out. Okay. That makes sense. No big upgrades for Thorze. Just more army and especially the breakers. They're so important to steal regional at war. Yeah. Makes microing also a little bit easier. Finally, some kind of front line, if not the sturdiest against bears. Wisps are coming in. Lots of wisps are coming in. Six <laughs> from the main detonate against the casters. Yeah, I guess with that, it's pretty safe to say that he's not expanding. Yeah, and dealing with those without clap is not easy. Thorzen gets the gargantuan cap now. And that will be his level 3 and 4 level ups, which is good, but again, no clap, which is normally the big MK's biggest strength in the late game. One heal scroll and invisibility on the Demon Hunter. No TP again. But against surrounds, he has staffs. He just wants to melt the mana. To steal the juice of the Mountain King. There we go. 4 150. There's still a lot of Storm Bolts at 50%. Staffs him out immediately. I'd love to see Invis on the MK actually. Between Storm Bolts, the Naga in trouble. Storm Bolt finds her again. Right click. She could very well be dying. She does. Once out of position, taken out right away. The militia call perfectly timed to produce some kind of a front line here. Wisp detonates, mostly expended. Wisps are all now gone. Demon, the only one who can drain anymore, and he still can pretty nicely drain. Oh my! He, was... he dropped the pendant, get the big potion, and kills the demon hunter, Thor Zane. Ruthless! What a play. <laughs> Damn. Ah, the balls to drop the pendant in the middle of everything. And it's 7 and 0. Pendant of Energy, big mana potion, still a very strong combo. But even without that, this was not looking good for Neutron. The Naga died so quickly. His only hope there was kind of getting to ultimate. And that is the seventh point in a row for the Swedes, man. What is happening here? Well, what's happening is that uh, the boot camp pays off in pretty much every single game. But yeah, like, does this go better if the Demon Hunter is not staffed out immediately? It was all so all in. I don't know. It, allowing Thorazine to expand again. I think if you break the expansion, you have to press your thumb on your opponent. But the tier 3 transition kind of... It's hard, it's hard to say what to do at this point. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the scary thing about this, right? If you go all in and kill the expo, that doesn't even necessarily win you the game. Because if your opponent found time to tech, you're still going to be stuck on tier 2 versus tier 2. Which is awful for Night Elf. You need tier 3. Which is then more time for your opponent. And human can compete tier 2 versus tier 3. Yeah. As we saw. Yeah. Thanks, Donnie, for the next 3 euro donation. We have the Vetoes here, Thorzane eliminating Twisted and CH. Terranus out for Neutron and Last Refuge as well, leaving us with AZ. And of course, we wouldn't be too surprised to see a Keeper here. 
And yeah, I it's... think Neutron has abandoned the Keeper, hasn't he? Oh wait, was it him who played it unconcealed with his weird like Hippo Rider stuff? Or was that false? Against think... human? Yeah, against human. What? <laughs> like, <laughs> what? All out base race and base lame and expanding and stuff. Huh. I think that was foggy though. It sounds like a neutron tactic. Like things that make no sense. <laughs> Remo and Neutron can... had big uh, debates about the usefulness of glaive throwers, for example. I remember that. In the old patch, they were good, but uh, in the new patch, they weren't. During our last game, or somewhat previous to that, by the way, Foggy and Happy met in the... What was it called? WCR. WCR Cup. They met in the final again. This time, best of three. Foggy took a map again, but Happy still victorious. Two to one. Breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, kind Foggy's of. Getting, getting closer though, little by little. So, match number two in this best of three series. Will Sweden remain their clean sheet and conquer the third place? Okay. Neutron needs to keep Oceanus in the race somehow. The next map that Sweden wins grants them rank three and W3IL. Right behind Dust. On map uh, on place two and you mad. This uh, yeah, it's not looking too good for oceans with a kind of weaker lineup. No enter, no one to be seen anymore. Their key player hasn't played yet, but we will see their games later today. So Thorzane bottom left with match and clan war points. Neutron in the upper right, and the question is, what hero? I expect Demon. Ooh, it okay. is Demon. Didn't expect that, to be honest. Is the most reliable. Is the one that is not trash in the late game. And is the one that doesn't require as much precision and expertise as the Warden does to make work. He is the good old workhorse that always does something and you can rely upon. So, Thor's an expansion or not? On Echo, it was the fastest expansion possible. Here it's super risky, and I, like, I got a feeling that Neutron could play Immolation. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm expecting if it's an expansion. Funnily enough, for a while in the meta, there used to be played an instant expansion on AZ, which sounds like impossible, but it is actually possible with a rock golem pull. But judging from game one, Thorzane, it feels like he prefers playing expansion, which again really isn't meta. Nowadays, in Asia, against Nylob, it's mostly one base plays, which also look hella strong. But uh, that doesn't seem to be something that Thorzane is too familiar with yet. But he certainly is very familiar with the Lightning Shield Creep. That one's looking good. How about Neutron? He didn't deny anything either. Starts off with the Claws. So far, so good. Yeah, ring for Thorzane. Would love to play Thorzane with a Blood Mage second, though. His banishes are so good! I like Neutron's play here, going for the Merc Camp. That might not be expected, even though Thorzane was scouting. Close to it. Mantle. Eh. But yeah, it's time to make a decision now, and Thorzane did make the decision. One base rifle casters. Alrighty. A player's forces are under attack. So apparently also comfortable playing that style. Suits the map, as we explained earlier. Now where to continue creeping is the question. Knight Elf can't really creep too easily because more archers are required, so it's natural for the Knight Elf to look for a bit of harass, start burning a little. Oh, water elemental block, that's pretty cute. <laughs> He's not moving at all. <laughs> Jamiko, is that you? Are you kidding? <laughs> How long was that? Like 10 seconds without a demon hunter moving? So good. That was pretty crazy, actually, yeah. Like, there was no movement. It's just doing it again, to a degree. That was one of the sickest blocks I've ever seen. The town is under siege. 
Yeah. And in his free time, he does surgery. Pretty good with his hands, apparently. So, did I? This feels like Thorazane is miles ahead already. Just from these moves, you know. Somehow got into his opponent's head. What's their turn doing on tier 2? There's no Hunter's Hall, right? I don't see one. It's time. There must be one, though. Like, it's not like you can play one base. Oh my god. Don't tell me he's playing Hippo Riders. <laughs> How many archers? Four? Four is okay. Starting to look like a foggy Hunter's Hall. Thorzin with a faster attack, Thorzin with a faster Naga. It's gonna be one easy kill to start things off on the Shadow Priest. But not too many footies anymore to pressure the demon in the middle. He's gonna get the next archer as well, but after that, the Naga is pretty hurt and may very well be dying because the demon does have the boots. Let's see, does he get this last hit? Will be big experience. He gets it. How many archers fell? One only on R? I think so. Yeah, one. And the Shadow Priest as well. Hunter's Hall only attack. now at like 50%. This is late, Dryads! Second hero could be acquired first. Would normally be the Naga. In the Night Elves' hands as well. Neutron now has the money. The Naga it is. Unfortunate ensnare. The Archer's gonna die. That's another one dying. Two Archers down now, but the AM also in trouble. Almost around on the Naga, threatening it there with the Militia. Nice. Block again, block again. How good is it? Sufficient, I would say. Archmage again, nice. burned down. No water elementals to block anymore. And Thorazin can't really reach with this Naga this time. Good Militia call there. That was crucial timing to fend off the Demon especially. Otherwise, this could have easily been a TP forced. Neutron is not taking tier 3 yet. Only now, the first lore coming in. Some Korean Night Elves tier like playing tech attack. before lore nowadays. But Neutron not que feeling quite so ballsy. It feels like you're giving Thorazine too much time for the rifle numbers. 38 already. Next farm almost done. But there's not really anything you can do, right? It's like, when you have Keeper Elk, maybe then you can try to kill all the rifles, but with Demon Naga, that doesn't really work. Normally what we see nowadays is Night Elves trying to rely on their Tier 3 tech, either MGs or Bears, to then finally deal with the rifles. Yeah, that's kind of what I mean. So if you tag faster, you don't have that many rifles when you take the first fight. So, all right. Oh. Reveal, That's more right there. clicks, and another TP. Oh boy. Militia calls really good for the second time here. Might result in less slumber, a so invisibility and dispel a little later. Yeah, and especially tier 3. We've been seeing plenty of tier 3s recently from human. We all know how strong inner fire can be, but with this excessive usage of militia, that's not going to be so easy. Also, no long rifles. That's pretty important. To an anti drive Oh yeah, that's an upgrade he certainly needs. Maybe he doesn't need invis, maybe he doesn't need priest adept, but he definitely needs long rifles. The Archmage got that attack. down. Shop as well, lines up with the tier 3 tech. No expansion play, Not long rifles now. Throw the beast, one for the shop, as it's uh, already in the bear's uh, toolbox. Oh, this is scary. There's no TP anymore. If the demon should somehow get surrounded, this could be a disaster. First, we go into the archers, though. First one dies right away. Demon trying to chase after the Naga, but he's slowed. It's not so easy to dry it getting taken out, as we're used to seeing from the rifles quickly with the sniper shots. MLG, no scope, 360. And now, Thorzain pushing towards the main. The tier 3 tech isn't ready yet. This is the scary timing for Night Elf before high tech becomes available. Already the rifle push is so strong and so scary. Damn. There's no the strategy that was uh, not considered as seriously viable for many, many years. But nowadays is 
So strong, too strong! <laughs> so that's a 2-0 for Thorzain, another 2-0! 9-0, Remo! And that was not even a 9-minute game. This block, Thorzain, so sick. So sick. One of the sickest blocks, like, he got this game from minute two and a half on. Demonstration of force, like Sweden, two days of playing, man. And they show up like this. And yeah, we would have two more matches left here. Lil DC versus Spiral and Starshade versus Side. Sweden gets third place, but for good sportsmanship and for the fun of the game, I think we're going to continue. Yeah, Side definitely wanted to play. I'm not sure if they will go through with it. Neutron morale is done. Might, okay. yeah, morale might be a little low. Yeah. I know when I lose in Clan Wars, I normally it's like not all QQ, it's all QX, and then I'm out of the game and I'm like, <laughs> screw you guys. So, I'm going home. <laughs> uh, it's, oh, the rest is eating, not even watching the games, not even celebrating their bronze medal, as they were so sure. I Le guess they had so much confidence in Thorzain that he was going to yeah. do it. Rightfully so. Le Chef Matrock, we learned that, uh, does some good pasta, apparently. Dude, pasta would be nice. <laughs> it is Sunday evening. <laughs> it is time for Neo and Remo to talk about their food plans for later. And actually, food, uh, food, pasta would be nice. Pasta would be nice. Like some... Are you like a pesto guy or a pun... Uh, what's it called again? Panna, yeah, ala panna guy. I'm more like an ala panna guy. Pesto I do like ala panna feels as well. like it's super easy and fast to do. So it always feels so oily, you know. <laughs> Don't you like oiled up stuff? <laughs> okay, Neil, calm, calm yourself down. Okay, we need Re a break. Recently, then. I, recently, I nerd, I learned, I nerd, I learned. The secret to good pesto, by the way, is in the nuts, Neil. It's in the nuts. And now you can do your next innuendo. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. I mean, people uh, have their own imagination. We get game four and five as well, as the other guys from Sweden are finished uh, with their food. So, Little DC versus Spiral and Starshape versus Side coming up. We go into a little break, though, and then we're back with Sweden demolishing Oceanus. See you in a bit. The Clan Wars decided, but we still continue playing. This is Sweden versus Oceanus 9 and 0 oh for Sweden. But now it's the WCG participant for Oceanus stepping in the ring side versus the man who just lost two heroes in that highlight clip, Starshape, who uh, on this land apparently has no problem at all joining the games. So France versus Sweden for the first time. Starshape not known to be a pretty good Night Elf versus Undead player. Side has a good track record versus him. And in uh, the early game or in the uh, pre-game lobby, Starshape was saying, oh man, can we just play a best of three tower defense that I might have a chance. But we'll see how it goes. Starshape versus side. Let's go. Both in good spirits here. Nice to see that a uh, side is not too demotivated. And I would have so certainly thought this was going to be Dreadlord. Like yeah. so super duper duper thought this was going to be Dreadlord. But no, side is actually playing the new school happy build. And maybe that's the curveball in itself, that he's not playing the Dreadlord. You know what I learned from side stream, by the way, the other day? Infernals can one-hit kill trees. What? Did you know that? No. I didn't know that either. And I thought you were the Dreadlord fan, Neo. I You're am. imposter but for I'm years also, and years. I'm, you know, uh, as a left wing as it gets, I don't kill trees. I just uh, worship them. I should play Night Elf, maybe. But no, I have no idea attack. about that. Yeah, but that's nice surprising. Move. But yeah, um, the two favorites for Oceans are actually coming up now. So this could turn out to be a much closer clan war than currently the score suggests. The current score after three games is 9-0, and which reminds me of our Firestalkers matches in this season. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to next season with Raptor Gaming. Oh, yeah. Raptor very glad of uh, their new pickup, I'm sure. <laughs> 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 
force. <laughs> did, did, do you get paid? Of course, millions of esports dollars. Mm -hmm. what do you think? Okay. Maybe hardware or something. I, I don't know. Are they doing hardware again? What is Raptor doing? They just acquired a new Warcraft team. <laughs> it's the only thing I know. Okay. I can tell you that much. I'm not getting much less than Lolliot is. <laughs> <laughs> Good start to this game. Insights and all. Starshape is actually playing Archer's Expansion on TS. What's up with these two players? No Dreadlord, no Hunts. Starshape expanding. Yeah, one Archer Expo. That's actually the proper build against the Happy build. Happy, uh... Wait, it's not a Happy build, though, is it? No, it is, but Side is bringing the ghouls. Did he see the tree? I imagine he did. I was, uh, having a little too much fun trash-talking. Neo, when are we gonna have professional commentators looking at the game? <laughs> Could you concentrate for once? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, man. Oh. O open qualifiers and 9-0 clan wars definitely the time to analyze every single step but this step by side is pretty good it's just killing this expo should be working out easily enough even if this costs one or two ghouls this is certainly worth it doesn't even cost a ghoul damn sides timing on point will cost him quite a bit of lumber in the end or perhaps rather will cost him more ghouls required in the main than he would have liked I like the necro. That's pretty cool. Instead of a necro ziggurat, you know. Someone else played this already. Was it Happy? No, he always plays Happy doesn't get important all the time. But uh, it was pain building triple necro yes. to save Lumber to go for three armor upgrades. Remo, dude, I don't know what you did in 2019, but your memory is so much better than I'm used to. I started drinking again. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you drink way less in 2019 than like the years before? Uh, yeah, but I drank a lot more in the second half than in the first half. Okay. It feels like I was more impressed in the second half. There you go. There might be a connection. Alcohol <laughs> always helps, guys. Alcohol <laughs> always helps. I'm kicking my microphone over. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Next Tree of Life attempt should be working out. It will once again be scouted by side, but he doesn't really have any forces. Starship, by the way, I, f I find that so cute. He listened to me, he has a wisp at the expansion, but Starship, one wisp is not enough, you'd have two, because one might get coiled. But I like I like the attempt, Starship. I like the attempt. The and yeah. turns out it is too late now for the DK to cancel. Or oh, the ghouls going for a school only creepjack of Starship at the Merc Camp, who was stealing it away from the undead side. That is interpretable two ways, I just noticed. As the ledge is not out yet, the demon doesn't have too much to fear, and now the demon is level 3 with boots! That is always now a nice power spike to hit. A town is under siege. Started, however, didn't start teching yet. Oh my god. Yeah. Expo not up, no attack. tech yet. And side is one third to tier 3. This Nova is gonna be good! And the Orb of Corruption as well. And Frenzy Ghouls are also really good when there's no high-level second hero, and also really good against Demon. However, this Demon has some pretty good tank inventory. Lich with a staff, that's pretty cool. Going into the main, harassing more Wisps. This is such a weird play. A player's force is Another kill. Oh, double detonate. <laughs> I mean, there's only right clicks at the moment, so not much to do, but damage is done. Sasha has game, to though. reproduce some wisps. How many does he have? Like one, two, three on lumber. Is Sasha ever gonna attack? I mean, he likes his hunts per minute, I've heard. Yeah, but not even a hunt. Okay, there's a hunt the fall, forces are under attack. attack now. Oh, yeah, he does have double hunt engine of war. Some fan service. It looks like he's playing Warden, but he's not playing Warden, he's playing Demon. Is he gonna rely on the ultimate? That would be a cool strat, relying on Metamorphosis. Yeah, it's very reliable. <laughs> it's no rare problem. to see nowadays. Dude, um, Chet is talking about fan fiction, that there should be some fan fiction about us too. I found out this Christmas 
that I'm not... Did I talk to you about that already? No. I am not the biggest nerd in my family. And that says something with a guy casting 700 hours of Warcraft in 2019. My sister is writing fan fiction. Oh, wait, wait, let me guess about what? I don't let know. What. I don't you know. don't know? She didn't tell me. She's writing What do you under... mean? The dinner conversation was, by the way, I've been writing on this fan fiction novel, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Kind is of. She, it, it kind of slipped out of her uh, that she's writing this, and she wouldn't tell me under what name. She wouldn't tell me about what. I would die to read it. That's pretty cute, though. That's kind of funny. I don't think I know anybody who... Writes fan fiction. I know two persons. Like what she's interested in. Is she interested in like Naruto or anime or No what? no I think it's either Harry Potter or Sherlock. The new Sherlock or the old Sherlock? Uh I think I think the new like with Cumberbatch, but for fan fiction does it matter? Town is under siege. Hmm. Good question. Like it feels like fantasy and sci-fi is easier to to fanfic because you can do so many different things and it's the more natural uh, place for it like if you just do fan fiction of England it's like okay <laughs> you know of course it's Johnson and the boys <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fun I mean you could come up with uh, some interesting yeah, stuff for sure yeah I I will probably never find out and that will haunt me uh, until my last did, day. Did she not get drunk enough to tell you? She's not drinking. Even on Christmas? Yeah, I know, man. Is she a wizard or something? How do you survive Christmas without drinking? It's the black sheep of the family. Bringing shame to our name. <laughs> <laughs> no, becoming a doctor and only getting A's and all. I don't like her. Disgusting. <laughs> we have a fight, Rebo. Yeah, we do. Lots of tier one stuff from Starshape plus the demon. However, heroes for side aren't so strong yet they, that they can just mow down these hunts. Also has to do with the fiend numbers, which aren't that high. But more fiends are coming. There's even a spirit tower in the main, star-shaped ready for the runbys. Not the best ziggurat placement though, if I'm being honest. As you know, I'm the oh, feng shui undead, always concerned with the base build. Well, up just fall. And in general, the damage for side is pretty good. Demon Hunter blocked. Nice play. Oh, sweet. Oh. Surround. That is not easy to do with two fiends. You know, every time I see that, I'm like, oh my god, that's so beautiful. Yeah. I wonder if I'm going to be able to do that one day. Yeah. And then, you know, reality hits and I'm like, nope. No. <laughs> I'm going to misclick five times <laughs> before I get that surround. I know that feels so good. Like... One day I will be able to get a fiend surround, but probably on accident. The weird thing is, whenever I do get surrounds, it's in games where I'm so far ahead that I'm super relaxed and I know I've won anyways, yeah. and then I get four unit surrounds, you know? <laughs> I never yeah. get the cool ones that win you the game. I don't know how that feels to win games, but... Oh, actually, in the Creepjack League, I did a two ghoul surround at the Necropolis on purpose. That felt so good. That's pretty cool, man. I think I told you this before, once I played against Night of on Twisted, and I followed a wisp into a tree line, and I got one demon hunter surrounded. I was pissed off for the whole day. <laughs> because that was the time when I hated demon hunter more than everything else, yeah. more than tanks and masonry and everything else. Yeah, I, I almost threw my monitor out the window, dude. <laughs> Esports money, though, can replace it with ease. No, that was like 2011. Oh, 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 no esports oh, money okay. at all. Not even like... Well, well, I mean, ESL back then was paying us very well. Yes, of Very, course. very well. ESL loved you guys. <laughs> you, you, you did such a great job. We didn't feel abused or misused at all. That was, that was great. Really great was when we were at ENC and you didn't even have our names marked down in the hotel we were in. We were just marked under Caster 1, Caster 2, Caster 3, Caster 4. Oh, that felt good. That felt really good. At least, hey, at least we had a roof over our heads and had a place to sleep. Abomination coiled, soaking up more damage against this tier 1 Night Elf unit, but Starship is doing a decent job sniping these statues all the time. So not much region. Still... Oh, sacrificing these this fiend. Well done. Close to level 4 on the ledge. 
Supposed oh, to look for the decay as well. Is he just still making archers and hunts? I mean, Foggy didn't feel that happy with mass archers. Maybe Starship can do it as well. Oh, dude. How good is Stinky Cloud right now? Yeah. Though? Oh, boy. If Run in gets, there, Avon. Go in there. If he infects all the archers. That's a hurt. Man, he's just trashing this army now. You know what would be really good, actually? Frost on. Just for the demon. Side is backing off. Yeah, that's true. Uh, side is backing off. Level 5 Demon Hunter. But I think he really wants to go ultimate this game. Like, why is he... Maybe if he gets... After he gets level 6, he's gonna get a second hero. But not before. It kind of makes sense, though. It's um, actually pretty fun how long this battling has been going on. Oh, big Nova! Oh, that one hurts! Nice Shadow Melt, saving these archers for the time being. Lich looking towards the dust, the demon in trouble. Wait a minute! No TP. The demon's surrounded! Yep. He doesn't have a TP! Nope. Oh, that hurts. Good Seven night, demon. Seconds Dude, side with these surrounds. Super sick. Also, the Boro. Like, he's not losing that one. And now, no hero, no oh, escape! Oh, the ghoul next, Nova! <laughs> Starship was expecting this, trying to split what just a tiny bit too late. And all of a sudden, he lost 16 supply. <laughs> I think that is bye-bye to the dream of a level 6 Demon Hunter. How much gold does he have? You can easily buy him back. But he needs more than just a Demon Hunter. Yeah, if we're talking about critical mass, that is neither critical nor a mass at the moment. I mean, star-shaped, he has quite a bit of mass already. Zeppelin coming in as well. The side perhaps looking to sweat some uh, base drops. That just seems to start to be a style that side is just perfecting more and more. Is this economy harassed in the main or at the expansion? I thought first this was only a thing for the Dreadlord play, but he keeps on doing it here as well with the standard build. Oh yeah, we've seen crazy. Uh, carrion swarms from side. Just uses it to creep. Thank you, Ark, for the four month resub. Thanks for everything you do, my man. Supporting the North American scene like no other. Yeah, Starship has no idea. It's a bottom second. Bottom second? What? Hey, let's get a sacrificial lab. And that steals XP from you. When level 6 could be a savior. I know Starship really likes Bottom. Whenever we talk about Warcraft, I'm like, Bottom is the most boring hero in the game. He's like, ah, she's not that bad. And I'm like, yeah, she's awful. She's yeah, like, that, terrible design. That's the most outrageous uh, Starship can get in a conversation, I guess. <laughs> Dude, I love Starship. He's such a cool guy. He is. But I'm not so, so sure about this strategy over here. Late game Night Elf, tier 2 against 2 base. Undead! 3 uh, base. It feels like Sashid really needs this ultimate. Real bad. But it's still so far away. He does get bonus damage from the bottom aura with ult, doesn't he? Yes, of course. The synergy, Neo. The synergy. <laughs> Aside just attacking the Hunter's Soul to, like, Makes Third hero Crypt Lord. My boy! Oh, yeah. It makes a lot of sense against archers, of course. You can easily afford it. Third base at 50%. Are under Lots of supply here in the expansion. Crypt Lord as well. <clears throat> More I'm kind of surprised Side isn't just playing quad Crypt Ghouls. I know he loves playing that. But maybe this game a little too serious for that kind of playstyle. Is this serious anymore? <laughs> I mean, kind of. He's not playing Dreadlord Mass Ghouls. Maybe that's his way of cheesing. <laughs> the Dreadlord is the tryhard strat, and yeah. this is the nonsense strat? Side is a little different than anyone else. So, third base by Star Shaped Up as well. A player's force we even have a wagon, and how good was this wagon yesterday, Remo? That was brilliant. I love that wagon. Did we figure out who's driving the wagon? I think it's... 
up to fan fiction. I will ask my sister to come up with something. Or chat is creative. You know what? That's probably explained somewhere in World of Warcraft, though. Like, they have meat wagons in World of Warcraft, I'm pretty sure. Lore then, experts? In some little lore book, it said, by the way, Acolyte XY is driving a meat wagon. Who are the workers for the Forsaken slash Undead? It's not just Acolytes, right? There must be a bigger workforce. I played World of Warcraft 25 years ago, guys. I don't know this stuff. Isn't this like these zombie dudes? I don't know if they work. Side is coming in for a big attack with quite the supply lead. Where's coming in for the mana burn? Crypto is in the... Oh! Zeppelin waiting for the perfect impale! That was pretty good. Oh, I missed the it. Nova in the back. Sorry about that. Now, hard to get out. There's another coil though. Sweet play by side indeed. Demon Hunter down to 50%, still not even close to 6, but mana's all gone. Bottom reach level 3, by the way. Pretty big damage from these archers now. Shredder killed. A player's force is and the A-bombs out of that fight. Nice saves there by side as well. Lots of damage still from these fiends with the roar. The team hunter was burning a lot of mana, but got barely any kills. Still super far away from his level 6. Bottom is level 3, which is nice. But he doesn't have... Marksmanship. How is this supposed to work without marksmanship? I don't think it will. Which could eat a fiend for plenty of mana. And then a Nova could come in surprisingly. That part of us taking so much damage from everything. Level 2 makes the Crypt Lord more tanky. Sweet. Impale again. Scroll of Protection even used, so the damage isn't that high anymore. The Starship still staying in this game. Expansion now under siege. Yeah. The wagon survived. There's plenty of damage. Good thing under control, honestly. The fact that he was able to hang in there for so long. Tank items do help out there. Bottom. Oh, there is the eating of the fiend and the nova. How much mana did the lich get? That was like 400 <laughs> mana for the fiend or something. Can just continue this. But sides getting out. 29 supply remaining for the Swede. This looks like the first Player point for Ocean is. This expansion, not mining in the bottom left. For side it is. Three bases saturated. Starship informed us earlier, by the way, that Mad Frog's cooking was Attack delicious. Excellent. Perhaps he was over full after that meal because this game, side is kind of eating him for breakfast. Oh my god, did you see that segue near that transition? Amazing. At the third base now. Once again, Side is knocking on the door. Oh, look at the disease being spread on the yeah. bridge. That's pretty cute. Yeah. I think he listened to the cast yesterday and just, like, fan servicing us. Yeah. What Happy does, we continue to do. We follow. Oh, nice impaled. Nova follow up. Out! <laughs> Mass Ooh. murder! Balloon's Grace, not good enough to protect you from that one. Not at this stage of the game, no. Eloon's Grace once introduced because of Mad Frog's Ooh. coils, but it doesn't help his ally here or his teammate here. Oh boy. It's a lot of archers dying this game. GG. A double Z and Ocean is against the first point in this clan war. Shout out to Side. Well played. Cool game. That was a pretty fun one. Despite no Dreadlord. Despite no Dreadlord. Quite surprised. <clears throat> Let's see that one. Sart, by the way, uh, looked up who is the driver of the wagon. Quote, the only thing I was able to find at Wowpedia was that, quote, it has a crew of three, one driver, one gunner, and one passenger. Gunner? Ah, yeah. And was well, someone has to. often accompanied by necromancers. Well, necro wagons. One, Makes one sense. passenger? Why is there one passenger in there? It's boring. Is he like, like, like a tourist? Like, boosting up the salary of the soldiers a little bit, cruising along. Maybe he's a re reporter. Reporter? Oh. For the magazines at home. Interesting. Thank you very much for that info. Again, we learned something. 
Yeah, start the new editor for Warcraft 3.info, the best page in the world, bringing us this league as well. And a lot of cool content, thanks to Rekram and the boys. Vito's coming in, Echo Isles, vetoed by side. Star shaped, Vito's concealed. Side follows with AZ, so we have LR and I TM left. Standard, pretty much. Here we, you see uh, Night Elves, how bold they are. If they're a little bit afraid of the early game, they will be too twisted. If not, LR most likely. Okie dokie. Let's see what we get next. Afterwards, we have Spiral, who almost became a hero yesterday by being so close to eliminating Happy from Rising Star Cup versus Lil DC. Starship Vito's Northern Isles? What? That's a great Night Elf map. Maybe he played too much against Happy and had some PTSD because Happy is so good on Northern Isles. This must be Happy's best map. It feels like he wins everything there. That would be an interesting statistic to dig up. Isn't that on Liquipedia? Oh, I think it's broken. I I randomly uh, was on the stats page early on War 3 Info. <laughs> and uh, you know they have the tournament ranking there with all the players, all their tournament results. Happy in tournaments has a 89% win rate. Isn't that, isn't that funny? Good. Happy has, against all races, a 70% win rate on Northern Isles. He's only better on Concealed with 85. <laughs> 85? It's only 14 games here. Um, it's only tier one and tier two tournaments, but yeah. Oh, Twisted, 100% win rate. 11 and 0 on Twisted Meadows. That's also where the final game of his grand final versus Moon took place. Correct. With the Keeper! The Keeper! <laughs> that was such a fun final. It was also very But I only remember game. that game and Concealed. What was the other two? I don't know, man. It's... So long ago. Ooh. I don't remember. Okay. Thought there was a little issue, but no, we're going on to last refuge for map number two. Can side get the 2 0? -oh? Would be a pretty one side at Clan War then. Ba -meow. Ba -meow. Oh, did they play? Where's my sound? My sound is off. Ah! There we go. No! Did, did they play Moon versus Happy in the grand final on LR? I think Happy played versus Lawliot and completely dismantled the fairy dragon. That's right. It looked like the strat just... Okay, I have to look this up now. It's driving crazy. <laughs> okay. We crazy, last, I tell you. Last Refuge. Um, that's a map where you can get a level 6 Dreadlord as well. Let's see. If side plays the DK again and plays it serious or not. Star shaped in the upper right. Flirting a little. Good luck, mon ami. Après moi de deluge. I don't know what that means. They played on AZ, Happy versus Moon. Ah, that sounds somewhat familiar. Oh, yeah, where the DK hit level 4 and nothing was dying anymore. Oh, f oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that was sick. Like, this entire final was sick. Is Deluge something like Rainfall or something? I don't know. Starshape knowing all the languages, man. What a scholar. He knows everything. Okay. Who speaks French? What does that mean? What's their shit talk? After me, the storm. How do you know that, Remo? You didn't even have French in school. It's also an English word. Like, deluge is like a big downpour. Oh. I did have uh, French for half a year. Oh, and it was voluntary. I was like, fuck that shit. What? Yeah. You did voluntary things in school? I also did voluntary... Like, I did uh, physics and chemistry, and I could decide after a while what I wanted to keep. Or I could keep both. 
but chemistry was like the worst. Chemistry was the worst. <laughs> yeah, I didn't far. get it. Like, never. Out of all the subjects in school. Latin was all, also pretty bad, but chemistry was like... <sighs> I can't believe you did. So you have, you had two extra classes in school at one point? Yep. I was like, maybe I like it. But I didn't. What changed between your high school years and later in your life? I mean, I was trying to, you know, uh, experience stuff. I still do that. I still go to museums and shit. I went to a museum with my mom on Christmas. It was pretty cool. Modern art. And uh, in Karlsruhe, city where I'm from. And then once again, I noticed, man, Mainz compared to that city is like a little village. We have like nothing <laughs> to art. And there's like three different kinds of theaters in Karlsruhe. But we also have one big theater here. Yeah, Karlsruhe pretty cool. However, Karlsruhe also a lot more violent. A lot more. Which is not so cool. You know what would have been great to have in chemistry? Mr. White. Ah, damn, I forgot you didn't watch. Breaking yeah, I know he did drugs. No, he made drugs. Yeah, he, he, made. Drugs. he made drugs. And he taught chemistry. Creeping continues. Both players here stealing camps from the enemy side. For Mr. Side, it's a little bit easier being able to work with skeletons. So level two for both. Nice scouting from the Acolyte. And a bit of a risky play here. This could very easily cost the TP for Starshade, but he's kind of lucky. He's even fighting against the Acolyte, dude. That, that's a dominant play. He's like, yeah, come at me, bro. Yeah. This Acolyte, though, pretty brave trying to fight this. Side creeping up to level two and a half, and the replenishment potion is the dream. This ensnare is also pretty good. So he's cleaning almost the entire camp. No surround attempt by side. Quite curious. Ah, okay, because first. it's nighttime. Yeah, he doesn't have a dust. Okay. No last hit here. Sweet early for side, I think. Demon Hunter the uses a lot of moon juice. Ooh. Second crib, boys! Ooh. Going gogs! And I know that's something that Starshape hates playing against. <laughs> Whenever he sees any Night Elf build, he's like, yep, that's going to lose to Gargoyles. <laughs> <laughs> Not many play people play it anymore, but Side still sometimes does. Well, now people are hating me again for not watching Breaking Bad anymore. Thanks. I feel so bad now. Sorry about that. It's okay. There's also plenty of people who haven't watched uh, well, Fire of the Rings yet. <laughs> Dude! I was reading uh, Kendrick's Twitter recently, and he says The Expanse is the best sci-fi series since, and I was so expecting Firefly, and then he mm. says Star Trek Voyager. Like, dude, you, you missed out. Did that, man. did that come after Firefly or before Firefly? Before, for sure. I think it's still in four by three. I don't know, man. There's like a million Star Treks. I don't know which one is which. Oh, look at that. DK, sneaky behind yep. the tree line. Oh, yep. yoink! Got him! <laughs> oh! Sweet that play. feels so good. Quite a sniper, DK. Wait, did you even watch uh, The Expanse? Me? Yeah, I think it's very good, but it's more like that Voyager is really good. Like, Voyager is like Star Trek. You know? So you don't think it's good, Voyager? Is... I haven't seen it. I don't have a horse in a in way place. entertaining, but you would quit after five minutes, I think. Hmm. There's nothing like the appeal is not quality. <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> I like, I like the way you put that. Players' <laughs> forces are under attack. Fake goggles, by the way. He unsummoned the second crypt, Ooh. maybe because he saw the panda. This is a weird game. This is a very weird game. It's again quite a fun game between them. Yeah, I thought The Expanse was... Like, the premise and the whole concept of the show is really cool. 
but like sometimes it's so silly and so immature and they have this amazing stage to have this big set sci-fi drama yeah. and then it's about how this one planet has this one colony where this one guy is a douchebag and it's kind of a hero versus villain story i'm like guys why is this so small and why is this so childish maybe budget but i think i like the first two seasons but the third one there i think went off the rails i have to watch the fourth Oh, sweet steal again. Side the sniper. Loses the guard in the end. But yeah, this panda, how much will it do in the late, I feel? Lich has a lot of time to creep up. I'm never really a fan of panda against undead. I know, and I don't understand. That hero is so good. I don't know, man. I feel there's not much impact. Except against ghouls and darks, of course. His damage per mana is insane, man. And you can juice juice mana, mana pots maybe. Mm -hmm. a and if one. he ever gets to level five, he roasts everything. That is correct. But how likely is it? Not that likely. But I think the main reason why most knights play Naga over Panda is because they're afraid that before level three you're gonna get punished. I think if knights were sure that the Panda would reach level three without much punishment, most would play Panda. Side but I know, you, you like your fork lightning, and the fork lightning is so good against fiends. I know, I know. Jenny Pretzelberg! <laughs> 39 months! Coming in before Neo has a chance to defend himself. <laughs> 39 fucking months, what the hell, Pork champ! Great work as always. And I feel like it's getting better week to week. Loving the Rising Star Cup series, kind of like the Jera days. Keep at it. I love you. Oh, thank you, Jenny. Greetings to Berlin. Jenny, this was very cute. I hope you're having a good yeah. day. I hope the hangover today wasn't too hard on you. Knowing Jenny, he's still hungover from New Year's. Oh, man, that must have been a big party. Pretty aggressive grouping here by Star. He's got an expansion coming up. This kind of looks like old Night of versus Undead, where we saw the Demon Panda combo all the time, and then around 50, an expansion. Accompanied by Frenzy Goals on the other side. Side's mid-game set, of course, is kind of weird with this Garg fake into something else. Oh, Drunken Haze hits well, but Panda can't connect with the Breath of Fire. Now he can, but Starshape says he has had enough of this. We'll say goodbye, TP out, give the rest of the camp over. It was a one Fiend for a one, no, one Dryad for a one Ghoul trade. Plus the TP. But the hell stone goes to Starshape, and that's pretty good. Yep. TP gone, though. I was a little worried about his uh, DH, but then I saw the inventory. A nice bartender here with the potion of invulnerability that he can serve himself. Well, that's a bad bartender then. Ah, forget about it. Still no tier 3 by Starshape waiting for this expo. It's finishing now. Ow. I mean, you're complaining about drinking the invul potion. I, I think that's that's like fairly easy to do, but imagine having to eat a stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a health stone. If and you yeah, can it's, swallow it's it in one, again. I think it's fine then. Need some special skills about it though. It's like in this one TV show where the guy has to eat sand to get rid of his uh, rash on his feet. Huh. <laughs> Did you see that one? It was called, uh... Wow, oh, it was on HBO. It was about a guy falsely accused of murder. It was pretty good. A limited series. I like limited series much more because they end and you know, okay, now it's over and you know, the story finds its end here, whereas many TV shows, they just keep on going over and over and normally get pretty bad. That is correct. They overstay their welcome as the Demon Hunter at the moment, or does he? No, Hellstone consumed. He has no problem with eating that. Level 3 Lich now, but almost out of mana, being focused hard. TP swap and save. Without using the first level 2 Nova, Fiend kill on the way out. 56 supply for Starshape. It's only Dryad though, still. So in the long run, with 2 base, 2 base. Should be doable for side, but at the moment he's down to 40, adding meat wagons rather early. And A-bombs as well. Starshape's time to punch, but towers at 50%. Can he kick them before? Looking towards the Haunted, but it's kind of dangerous to commit in there. 
Chat said, what makes you think to consume health stones orally? <laughs> 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 That's not bad. So the cancel is achieved, but this is costing a lot of units for star shape. More and more are falling to the grinder. And there's a narrow tower here, so the demon can be pretty well controlled. However, statues also in trouble. Could be another kill. Breath of Fire. Look at the damage of this Breath of Fire, Neo. Oh my god, this panda. How good is he? Excuse me. Star shape still willing to fight. Use the big mana pot. Did not insert the health stone yet. One more A-bombs are coming, though. And they're not so easy to kill. Uh, it's almost dead already. W once again, the disease cloud is doing God's work. Drunken Haze, Breath of Fire, pretty good, I gotta admit. It feels like the towers are securing this position. Blocks himself a little. Step out. Oh, but the next block? Yeah, nothing to save this panda anymore. No one, two, one. Th doesn't even need now. it. Now. Doesn't even need it. Oh, Just that block. Jeez. <laughs> Darn it, what? You have an expansion! But no tier 3 and... Side oh, heroes maybe a little too dominant. That block was sweet. Like the blocks today, one by Thorzane, one by Side, Not disappointing at all. And it's another 2-0, but this time 4 Ocean is 9 to 3. I feel like he just thought he can't kick the expansion anymore. He had no forces. But it was two base, two base. You just keep on creeping, you keep on killing stuff, and then you get Panda 5, and then Roasty Toasty. Hmm. All right. Four two O's in a row, Neil. This, yeah. This day is going, or this cast, this match is going surprisingly fast. That is correct. We go into the last series of the day after only three hours of casting. It's going to be Spiral versus Little DC, and we'll see each other after a little break. Apparently, Spiral did not show up for the clan war, ladies and gentlemen, so the fifth game will not be played. We end this with a 12-3 for the Soviet war elite, who after the silver medal in season one, get the bronze medal in season three, kind of save their season. Ocean is from being the champion down to rank four. Win, of course, goes to UMAD and Dust, the crazy American uh, story ending up with the silver medal this time. That's it for W3IL Season 2. It was a lot of fun. We gathered some funds for Season 3 already. We boosted the uh, prize money for Season 2 to $1,000. That was the max. And so we can carry over some doleros to Season 3. When will that happen? We don't know. Most likely after Reforge. So when we know how the server structure is, uh, the admins will decide when to start and how it all goes. But that was a very cool season with the deserved winner, a very cool runner-up, and uh, yeah, Soviet War Elite in rank 3. Again, Ocean is a little weakened throughout the season with the departure of Wan, especially. Let's see if they pick up uh, some more players for season 3. They have Please now, and of course, uh, Spiral just churning it up. But yeah, that's it for W3IL season 2.